You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. You know, these dogs are getting cataract surgery for way cheaper. Not even a real veteran. Uh, Derek's not even picky. Yeah. <laughs> you know what makes me go fund me a lot more fun? Is if they made a thing where you could you could get other people to pile on and shame other people for what they've donated money to. Like, I have cancer and you're donating to their fucking wedding fund, you oh, piece of I, sh- I, like, I make, like, you can that. shame people to the th- never, I, ch- I do. I'm gonna switch my money over to the cancer dude. <laughs> the p- problem is when I have to promote a GoFundMe for political reasons, <laughs> like it's a comic or it's Derek or something. <laughs> So you have then, to pretend to yeah, care about Oh, it. hey, there's this fucking uh, kid who's fucking living on an iron lung, and, well, <laughs> you just promoted, you know, some fucking dumb thing I promoted. So I can't do that. And, or kind of like the, uh, I made the, I'll never go to another wedding or funeral announcement back on, when websites were pertinent. Like, <laughs> I've already sworn that off. So if I swear off, I'm sorry, I just can't promote your thing because yeah. I have a thing, which I will after this special because I have that whole closing bit. Is Anyway. Uh... Yeah, well, I think just being an asshole that everybody knows it is the easiest thing to be able to say, no, I don't, I don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> but then there are the times you have to. Yeah. It's, it, uh, it's almost yeah. like uh, fuck. We should save this, but we shouldn't. But uh, <laughs> if we're what? not on a podcast. What are we saving <laughs> stuff for now? <laughs> oh, we're going. Yeah. Oh, we've been going. I thought it would be a good dovetail into the uh, GoFundMe right. that we're going to end up talking about after the thank yous. Oh, okay. All right. Good. It's uh, now I kind of kind of forgot my point but it's uh it's like when uh fuck had a great analogy it's uh oh oh uh, uh podcasts people want me to do their podcast or their radio show uh-huh. just terrestrial radio and you go i i don't do that we don't have guests on our podcast people want to be a guest via skype on ours or me on theirs and i go no i don't do that because phoners and Skype always suck. There's just enough of a delay, and you can't read faces, and you end up stepping on each other's sentences, and I don't. But every now and then we do. Like Mike from No FX. Well, yeah, fuck you. Our number one all-time downloaded oh, really? podcast. Yeah. All right. Well, I still don't like to do it, and we actually talked about that on the podcast. I hate doing this. Yeah. So do I. It fucks up your timing, but... <clears throat> So, yeah, when I do a mic from NoFX, everyone else, oh, you won't do my show or I can't be on your show? Well, there's exceptions. Yeah. Especially when I'm drinking and it's in the moment. And it changes the whole dynamic because certainly we did, you know, everybody else on mic tries not to say anything, you know, for the most part the whole time. We're an audience member instead of getting to contribute because we're going to end up fucking up the... The already fucked up timing. And yeah. there's a lot of times where it's contractually you know, obligated to promote a book or something. I have to do... For you. Yeah, yeah. for me. And if it's not, no, I, I don't mm. want to do that. Jesus. And the times we have done it on our podcast, I think it was because Mike called me anyway. I'm like, oh, fuck, let's put him on the podcast because we're drunk in here. But I didn't schedule that weeks out. I would have said... No, no, I, I, Chris Johnson helped us with that and put it together. But it was it was definitely one of those things where you didn't want to do it, not because you didn't want to talk to Fat Mike, is because you don't like doing those things, yeah, at all. And then we did it live. Wait, the call in we did a live one in San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah, yeah. That's the most downloaded one. Nope. Not when he randomly called in. He didn't randomly call in. That was I don't scheduled. Fucking no, I didn't tell you until you needed to know. <laughs> it was right. random to stand home. Fucking <laughs> everything's <laughs> hey, random. Hey, pick up to the me. phone, stand home. <laughs> Hey, we're back. We're back in the fun house. <laughs> Last week, we were just back in uh, Tucson, close to the fun house. But now we're back with all the kids. Yay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
That's why I was going to do fucking Stocks and uh, Derek right up front because they're the worst audience ever. They just sit there like, uh, how long is this podcast going to last before we can drink and talk? Anyway, so yeah, we'll get back to you, (laughs) fucking lumps. I want to know too. (laughs) Chad Shank. You uh, saw Chaley the most recently. He you doesn't remember were... the last time he saw me. Um, I sort of do. <laughs> that was uh, a, a whirlwind trip from the very beginning. Well, uh, you hadn't been up to Alaska since you were stationed up there, right? Uh, 96, I yeah. think. And uh, you you had gone into Coots back then. Yeah. Yeah, in... Uh, uh, we talk, we've talked about before how my dad used to work there. I got a picture, too. Oh, from the picture, 70s, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I got your shirt. Nice. The one thing the you one fucking left behind. Well, I don't know where to even start telling these stories. I don't want to start with that last night because that was I'll, 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 I'll start for you f- because Chaley made me feel bad enough for not being at the first I didn't Alaska try to. Comedy Festival. It's Before I You Die. To. Alaska but- Before You Die Comedy Fest, which they had 44 comics paid to go up there. They paid their way up to go perform at Coots and the other venues they Wait, had. They, the comics paid their the own. Comics way. paid their fucking own way, and it's a lot of kind them of a trend. Well, th- it was really interesting because that's how I got you originally to come up to Coots. You wanted to go because of Jackie Trinka, but you wanted to go because you wanted to perform in Alaska. And a lot of these because comics, of Jackie Trinka. Well, well, but it's also you've also crossed off all fifty yeah, states. Yeah, a lot of these guys are still there's that's still a valid thing for a comic. So Believe me, when we do Bisbee Comedy Festival, it's we're going to be counting on comics want to come here for the novelty. Cause exactly, there ain't no money here. Yeah, ask a local, <laughs> and he'll ask you for money. <laughs> that was <laughs> Cass Smiley put the whole thing on by herself. Seriously, she was not letting anyone help out, and that's probably why she got so stressed. Duran, the the manager at Coots, he's driving me to the to the bar on the first night, and I go, "So what's going on?" And he goes, "I don't know." <laughs> he had no fucking idea what was happening or who was going to do what. I mean, I'm like, "What's going on?" He goes, "Cass is doing this all on her own, and she's she's doing a great job." But I really just let her. I have run. I have three comics coming down from Tucson, driving two hours tomorrow. And I panicked for one show. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I got to get keys made for the comedy <laughs> condo. And should we never put those mattress pads. Anyway, <laughs> Chaley asked me repeatedly. And then at, at first I thought I was going to be filming the yeah. special on the, the, the same weekend. And that didn't turn out to be. So Chaley would drop me notes from up there. Well, they he would, sends me this. Oh, oh, I knew it. I I'm, fucking I'm, knew it. I'm, this is why he didn't respond to the fucking email. And I go, something's up. It's a text. Because he's not even, not even, oh no. That's, oh, that one? Yeah. Oh, it yeah, says, yeah, yeah. I'm ducking wrecked and should not be texting, but this is a blast and you should be here. When you are drunk, you will lash out as to why this is inappropriate, <laughs> but I'll deal with that later, probably on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I have explained to people I have never met that you have other commitments and it didn't work out. But I walk, I, this bar, and I can't help but think there's something missing without you here. Totally gay. (laughs) (laughs) The guys guys are doing great, but I'm rated enough to try and attempt personal with you. I'm already regretting it because I forgot why I started this. (laughs) <laughs> so we can we can use that as a jumping off oh, wow, point yeah. into your week. Oh, yeah, that sums it up. <laughs> I think we had that same conversation amongst ourselves. Well, everybody kept thinking you were going to show up. That was the thing, right up until the very Erickson end. Erickson was like, "Listen, Shaley, I don't fucking believe you because this is all part of the thing. Like we're like it's the big snow job." And I go, "Look, I'm just telling you. If it was part of the thing, the last person you would tell." Is Erickson or Kerry Mitchell because yes. they're blabbermouths. They fit in so perfectly with the Coots Duran Coots crowd. They're the biggest fucking blabbermouths. <laughs> they're blabbermouths, just you know, separated by a degree. So yeah, no, I wouldn't have told you. That, uh, but I couldn't do it. Like, I know. I know Listen. if I showed up there, I have obligations. Like just actually working for the first time in nine months, yeah. where I'm in a panic. Just trying to figure out my own act and how to get three comics into a a, 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 a comedy condo. 
Yeah. That's enough. Yes. That's my plate. I think what happened was uh, I, I felt like I was probably, probably dropping way too many hints. And then I never really – we never talk about personal things or really anything unless it's on a podcast. <laughs> uh, I didn't ever say, hey, You're by the way – too busy. Hey, I, I, I really think you should come up or – or just it would be nice if you were there because you're a big part of, of comedy sticking around as long as it did up in Anchorage. But I know just being here off and, quote, retired. Yeah. Yeah, I do enough damage to myself just because I have no reason to not drink at one in the afternoon. I know what Alaska's like. And now Chad <laughs> can attest that would not have been the best way for not me conducive. to kick off business yeah. season. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I definitely would agree with yeah. that. How long did it take you to recover, or have you? I'm still trying to and recover. And that's been a week? I did. I was able to massage most of the cocaine out of my face <laughs> uh, by about the third or fourth day after we got back. Where it bled through your sinuses oh. into actually glowing uh, on the outside of your skin? I, I would punch myself in the face just to break it up, and then I'd get so <laughs> high. It was incredible. Well, it, what the way it started was uh, Tracy and I got there the day before uh, the festival started and proceeded to drink with the Powell's fucking bourbon till five in the morning. Stupid. First day. Just off the plane. We were already drunk on the plane. <laughs> so that was dumb of me. And then the Brechels got there and they said, we're not going to Coots. <laughs> they went straight home. And I'm like, Wow. Erickson, right on. So they went right home. And then the next day, Erickson and, and Andrus had a show. And after the show, we set up some mics to do a podcast. But we waited until Chad Shank rolls in at like 12 o'clock. And he walks into a room full of people, a ton of weed, like was a sponsor. <laughs> and even the sponsors were there wanting to meet Chad. Yeah, great, great. Chad Lange, walks in, yeah. drinks, joints. I had I had my bags and my fucking <laughs> coat and shit coming into Coots. And fucking going there. Midnight or me noon? Joints and midnight. midnight. <laughs> handing me joints and drinks and showing me where the pizza is and yeah. handed me a microphone and I sat down and it was a whirlwind. It was later on somebody uh, approached me and goes, uh, hey, I don't mean to be rude, but who are you? <laughs> well, I was like, I'm not anybody. And he goes, yeah, but I was in the room the other night and when you got there, like everybody cheered. <laughs> oh, they were waiting on me. <laughs> I'm probably glad to get started. <laughs> and that, sh that was a shit show of a podcast because... Uh, Oh, it was, man. it was, there was enough of a din in the background that everyone's yelling over each other, but the microphone is picking up everything as if you were just talking softly. So, uh, I might, I might throw a bit of it at the end of this podcast. <laughs> I, I, good, do. Uh, someone, <laughs> oh, someone shit. tweeted that there was like a, uh, Stan Hope Free Doug Stan Hope podcast going on. Mm. It was probably Cass. No, yeah, that was later. When we did a sound check for some live podcasts that were oh, that was, be going that on. Oh, that was uh, Saturday. That was four days in. Yeah, it was all the same day. It was, <laughs> we, uh, the sun I, never sets. I remember, I remember Liz trying to listen to some of the uh, like 10-minute podcasts we did for my oh, yeah. birthday in Daytona in 2016. And, and it's just everyone coming in and out, and yeah. it's fucking unlistenable. We were on but parts where I'm sure were great. I just no, wait there was, there was, I think we did 17 or 18 podcasts in that weekend because <laughs> we just kept doing the little clips. Yeah. The, oh yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the 10 minutes at a time. Yeah. yeah. This one, the the funniest podcast that uh, I may have ever been witness to <laughs> was whenever we did the sound check on stage, and so there was like nobody in this room. They were just they had the chairs setting up, and there were South people Long setting North up. Long it was nor on the north stage. They were having three live podcasts that recorded live, yeah. and they had an audience area out front, which would be the showroom, right? And I'm like, so uh, how are you guys doing that? They didn't have any plan. So I go, let's we'll go there early. So Eric's and Andy and and uh, Chad and I, we go there early. Your bloody Marys, yeah. and it was an hour before they were even there to even sound check. So we ran basically tape. And it was just, ba I don't even know how it started because I was getting the know. second round of Bloody Marys. I could hear everything going on in the room. I'm like, Sheesh. get going. I got to get over there. We didn't, Shaylee was not in there and it was just us, but we're sitting around and we're just talking into the microphone so they can test it. But nobody's giving, all right, you know, we're good. So we just ended up in a natural fucking banter, but we're all still talking into the podcast. Hung over and fucking oh. ramping up with bl bloodies already. Oh, man. <laughs> and Andy told the funny... I hope that that part that, we that, got that. will go yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Andy told one of the funniest... I don't, it might have been three it's funny still going stories. On. Yeah. 
Oh, I don't know. We had to stop. I don't know my point. That was good. Everybody else that was getting ready to do their podcast looked like they hated us because we just had more fun with nobody in the room than they were going to get to have the whole day. It was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I I called up once just to check in with Chaley, uh to see how much fun everyone was having without me, and uh, weren't disappointed. He were said, uh, I, "I know it's one o'clock in the afternoon." Alaska time. I remember I, this. I, yeah, I called right before we went to the yeah. And I thought maybe Chaley's awake because he'd be the first one up. And that's morning in Alaska is 1, 1 p.m. And he said, yeah, Andy's just waking up now. Uh, and Chad looked down. I think he's sleeping on the floor or something. And he said, yeah, Chad looked down and noticed that Andy had a trail of blood leaking from his nose into his mouth down, and didn't realize down it. Down his chin. And, neck. And, and, <laughs> and Chaley says, and Chad told Tracy about it, but not loud enough that Andy could hear it and wipe it off. He wanted everyone to notice except Andy. <laughs> It was fucking funny. I didn't he was, want to be Andy, funny. Andy was actually telling the story. So he's talking and he's leaking all over himself and had no idea what was going on. That's a famous old 80s comic story. There was a comic named Ollie Joe Prater who was like a precursor to John Fox, who's a legendary, like out of control guy and way too late to still be doing this. But he had done so much blow, he got a nosebleed on stage while he's doing his, you know, stupid act. And uh, and the audience was aghast when he started pouring blood, but he didn't know it. So he just goes on with his act, and uh, till it, someone points to his face, and he he looks down and touches his face and sees blood everywhere, and he 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 pauses. He's like four hundred and fifty pounds overall, haystacks, Calhoun looking, and he he just looks at the audience. He goes, "What? Nobody parties anymore." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> our thing well we one of the nights before we went out we were watching that uh, uh PD live, live, live live pd and that was the thing that we kept saying to each other because at one point this cop was dealing with the guy that had, was on high on something and the cop was like trying to be cool i don't remember the whole context but he goes drugs are a hell of a drugs <laughs> and we all fucking <laughs> fell out laughing <laughs> So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we kept saying. Drugs are a hell of a drugs. Because that was why the fucking last time I saw you guys was so crazy. Because that was the last night there, and I hung out with Andy. And Andy is just a fucking magnet oh, okay, for people. Okay, to party. these guys were done. Like they did a the Dirty Bird show on Thursday, uh, and or Andy did one set on Thursday night, late night Dirty Show, and one of the only. One, four comics only did dirty material. The rest just did time, which was like, I just saw you in the main room do the same fucking yeah. set. But then the next night, Erickson hosted it. We moved it to the swing bar, which is a bigger bar. Birdhouse is just too small. Yeah. Right. So they were really just coasting after their Wednesday night. This is the big room. The fun house is the big room the big compared room. to the yes. birdhouse. There's nothing. I oh, yeah. So, I believe you did shows in there. Well, well, and if you're over six feet tall, you're just breathing in 30-year-old chlamydia. We and would, asbestos. Yeah, because yeah, well, there's just women's underwear and dudes' oh, underwear just stapled, stapled everywhere. To the ceiling and the so walls, you're in the past, we've done shows in there, but we did like a 20-minute quick set where like the headliner came in there and did 15, right? That was, That's what we Makes did. Sense. And they knew that, so they, we, we moved it to the swing bar, which was great. Erickson hosted it. It was great. But- their, their show was on Wednesday night. So it was just fucking party all the way. And, uh, Andy, what the f he was, uh, you're saying he's a magnet for these people, but I think he's magnetized to those people. He smells weakness in a character that he can exploit and then brings uh, them along. So on Saturday night, when we go in there, right? Saturday night, when we go in there, we walk into right into Coots. Take about 30 steps and plant ourselves at a table. We're three tables into the bar. We left at closing. We were th that we never went further than that. We posted up right there and just that's drank right. the whole that fucking was that night. Same we night. never, and that was that night that girl was, oh, was that eyeballing. Was the night I had a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> I had, uh, 
You always get a girlfriend at Coots. Listen, this I, I we were sitting there at the uh, the little log fucking things, and so they're not very far behind. You know, they're right there behind us. And I told Andy, I was like, that woman sitting behind us is fucking gorgeous. You know, just just in conversation while we're just hanging out there. And about ten minutes or so later, she's uh, uh, pulling her boobs out so her friend can take a picture. At about the same time, I happen to be looking that way. So she's like, uh, don't, you don't look. But meanwhile, the tops of her nipples are out and she's got great boobs. So I'm fucking like, do, you know, pretending I cover my face like a smart ass. <laughs> and, uh, so which then she laughed and then, uh, that's how you get them. That's, that's I, how you I, rope them. That was what I, that was what I took later on. I was like, I fucking rather be charming than good looking. <laughs> <laughs> fucking works every time. And, uh, that's how I got bingo. She, she was she, laughing. She still doesn't get the joke, but so here she is still. You just keep the jokes coming every time she's about to leave. <laughs> <laughs> just make them about her and she laughs. So then she, her friend shows her the picture and she's like, oh, that looks good. Send it to me. So, and of course, we're all just on top of each other. So I leaned over and go, hey, can you send it to me too? And then she laughed again and I knew I had, but I didn't, uh, uh, you know, I, that was good enough for me. And then she started flirting with me later on. Like I was with Andy at another portion of the bar and she came over and started, you know, talking to me. And then I was talking to Shaylee and she walked over. Chad and, and I were uh, talking, looking at each other, talking. And it's, it's a crowded bar on a Saturday night. We're close enough that I go, he's looking at me, but he's not looking at me. <laughs> I could see him. And then he just turned and walked away. And I'm like, and then the, the, the you know, it, what we hot. need to do. And he just walked. And he and I'm like, what the fuck? And he just he went over there and I mean, I'm not one who approaches girls, but uh yeah, I don't know what I didn't I didn't know anything was going on, but I knew that you had some purpose in your steps. Yeah, that well that was I went over and I just uh uh I I whispered in her ear but the deep voice or two. I said, uh uh I didn't anticipate that the best part of my night was gonna be seeing uh eighty percent of your boobs on accident, but since it was, I thought I should say thanks and introduce myself. So I, that's and then uh nice. and, and then I, but then I was cooler than that and I just walked away and I went back over to hang out with these guys and <laughs> I went while you're ahead. Like totally. Listen, I'm not, I d I didn't I I d I wasn't gonna wait for her to tell me to leave creep, so I just left like a creep. Uh, uh sometimes a victory comes down to a knowing you could and then other times in the morning, glad you, you didn't. didn't. <laughs> the, well, and that was, it was all right in plain sight. And, you know, everybody was there and I wasn't going to, you know, I've been married for 20 years. I told, I, I told Erickson, I was like, I've, I've been displeasing the same woman for 20 <laughs> years. She's used to it. I don't want to, I don't want to take off my clothes and be fat in front of somebody new and <laughs> come too fast yeah. and have to explain it. Like, <laughs> or I'm not at all because you're it. so yeah. coked up. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not me. It, it gets uh, hard. I promise. It's not you. It's me. It's actually yeah. the guy that gave me this uh, shit. No, it was only <laughs> it's not the, any of us. The whole story was is that she, I, she was the hottest chick in the bar. And she was like a pro. She at one point she came over and pulled, jerked on my beard really hard. She's like, just one time, and I was like, oh shit, this is fucking. But then, so, sorry uh, for the listener. You you did the jerking on your beard before you said the sentence, and I was I was thinking you were gonna say, and I noticed she had a beard, but she's still <laughs> the best looking chicken coots. Some years it's true. Sometimes you only go by weight. <laughs> Lewis Johnson is a Denver comic, and uh, this goes back to the days where I was the middle act, Hedberg was the opener in Minneapolis, and uh, he was the headliner, but I still remember this joke. He said, I've been married so long, I don't even know what I'd say to a woman in a bar. I'd probably just walk up to her and say, hey, I'm going to the store. Do you want me to get you anything? <laughs> no? Then don't be bitching when I get back. <laughs> The, the the whole story was worth it when Erickson looked at me and goes, "Fuck, Shank, who knew you're an Alaska nine? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was fun. That was that, that was early in the. That's night, the though. beauty of that bar because I I went I started going there when they hired my band back in I think ninety I think that was the first year we were up there. And just walking in, no matter what they change about that place, uh, Doug, it's exactly as you, yeah. you would remember. But it was so cool. Like, I've done that before where I've gone just to the birdhouse and watched Becker for his shift. 
fucking the whole shift, just yeah. sitting there. And then, like, when we walked in there, we were three tables in. We just stayed there all night because you'd go somewhere else. You'd come back. We're all yeah. just sitting there. Across the way, it's a pinch point. So you're, like, maybe eight feet. Bud funnel. <laughs> you're eight feet from the bartender. That has a tab running for us that I don't think we ever bought a drink in the fucking joint. It was a fucking blast. It was a blast. And it was fun because you, you don't even need to go way back. <laughs> Chad's just, taking notes. Don't even write it down. This just is a part it. two. Hit, it, hit a beat. Well, because I, when you said that, I just remembered that it was that night, too, whenever we went over and uh, uh, tried to pay for a drink or tried to do something. And they're like, no, you're fine. And I so I uh, that little that little cute blonde bartender... Uh, that Natalie. was there. Twenty one years. Yeah, yeah, says yeah. Tracy. Uh, was it Natalie? I don't. I don't. I didn't ever know her name. It was the butt plug girl. Uh, oh but, shit! Butt funnel. Shit. Uh, oh, butt plug. Free shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry Natalie. It's, Tracy has corrected it to Bree as the butt plug girl. Well, that's and that's not a derogative story. It's no, funny. no, no. Uh, but I forgot that. But uh, so I. Just like Shaley said, you felt weird because I had people chase me down and give me drinks that I didn't even want when I was trying to. They, they were so hospitable. That's why I didn't go. It was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was no kidding. I'm like walking around with two drinks sometimes. I'm like, I don't. And uh, so I, 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 I remember I threw a 20 over to her just because everybody was so nice. And it was. That's you know, why they I give you leaving. Coke, too, is well, so you remember to tip. Well, <laughs> so she. Uh, after I threw a 20 down on the thing, she flashed me her tit. Well, she flashed her bra at me, uh, and, uh, just being goofy. And, uh, I went to overreact and be goofy, you know, ah, you know, and I blew my fucking knee out. <laughs> hey, shit, my knee's still fucked up right now. I can't have to wear a knee brace. I told her, I'm like, hey, public service announcement, don't flash your tits at old guys. You're gonna fucking cause physical injuries. <laughs> Coots injury. Blew That's my great. knee out at Coots because the bartender <laughs> flashed her tits at me. That'd be a great lawsuit. <laughs> uh, I, I'd like to enter into. Uh, uh, can we have a demonstration of the tits? <laughs> the jury will understand when they see these tits. <laughs> it was, <clears throat> that was that night got long because like, I don't know you. I get to hang out with Andy a lot, and uh, I love hanging out with Andy and. But he's just so much more approachable. He, everybody sees him as the approachable guy who, you know, hey, let's go sit in my car and fucking huff glue, you know? And he's like, all right, let's go yeah, sit in your he, car and yeah. huff glue. He says it's so Mr. Rogers-like. <laughs> well, you know, that's funny you said that because I was talking to one of the previous promotions directors before I came back there in 2009, 2010. And uh, we're talking, and then Andy comes up, and Andy and her start talking. And I'm like, do you know Andy? She goes, no. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? They're talking, but they're being so familiar. And it's all Andy. It's, yeah. She's being nice, but it's like, it, there's such a repartee there that I'm like, they, oh, you must have, did you book Andy when he was, I don't know that guy. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> he just smooths himself all the way in. Yeah. Well, it, also remember by that point too, Andy would come, you know, he'd come up to me and be like, hey. This guy wants to take us out and go do a bump, you know, in, the car, in his car. And so we, all right, we'll go walk over and do a line in the car. And, and as then, you're following him, he goes up to the guy and says, "Hey, you got any bumps we yeah. can do in your car? Because I kind of yeah. promised some brought, people I brought my buddy with me. <laughs> I'm like, no shit, I don't care. It had work. Hey, well, detail, we're going to your well, car first. Then, well, then we'd go do that, and then I'd be back in the bar, and I'd be, and then he'd come, hey. Hey, this other guy wants us to go. They're like, what? This, holy shit, Andy. We're, I'm fucking fat, dude. I'm, I can't be Chris Farley in it in Alaska. It dude, was, it's a total uh, buying Doug a Jaeger. Not that oh, they even yeah, like Jaeger, yeah. but they thought that that was the thing to do. So, dude, yeah, Andy's. The, the, just before we Ubered over to see, but I'd leave at six in the morning to fly out. Yeah. At four in the morning, I was handed a paper plate that had like a gram line. Laid out for each person in the room. I had to take the ID and cut off like a quarter of it. And then I'm like, this is like my 13th line of the night. I don't need to snort a gram of cocaine before but I get you on had, the airplane. It was, it was way after closing. You would, you and Andy had gone to some friend. We were at an apartment of yeah. some dude that, at that point. Yeah. And your stuff was all no, sitting that there. Was like four you in the and morning. Andy had packed in the, in the morning that we day. We packed before we left. And we I'm, were smart. I looked at it, I'm like, this could still go awry. This is, there's no, there's no assurance it almost that, did. yeah. 
<laughs> First of all, you're a pro. You used your ID to cut a line. You, you, don't you have like a Safeway card you could have thrown? Oh, away? I don't know. It was the card <laughs> oh, okay. that was laying on oh, the someone's idea. Yeah, someone's idea. I think, and, uh, uh, or a Safeway card. I don't know. I was looking at the giant <laughs> pile of cocaine that I didn't want to do before I got on an airplane. That's a fucking. It's a miserable feeling. We've had parties here in the past where you go, there's drugs left over that people just, like, leaving drugs behind. Because it's kind of like Hedberg would never turn down a date because he remembered the times where it was hard to get <laughs> yeah, work. Like it, so yeah. he would just take He would take work himself to death because literally. he remembered being, uh, well. Uh, yeah, but you you have that feeling. Like I was well, we so also, happy. Andy doesn't come around a lot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy to leave uh, London completely out of alcohol, but without wanting. Like I got my duty free, oh. and I you know, on my last pack of cigarettes that I know I'm not going to be able to smoke for but twenty hours. Because I gave a couple packs to Joby. Remember to send cigarettes to Joby <laughs> and hack and uh, and I. So yeah, I was I was perfectly done. So yeah, if you can leave Alaska and having done all the drugs <laughs> that you could possibly do without leaving any behind, but you 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 were coked up enough to remember to tip. <laughs> <laughs> The least I could do. That place was hospitable, man. All right. Let's uh, take a break. We don't have a sponsor this week. I don't know how many we lost by being away for uh, six or seven weeks of fucking evergreens, but I have a bunch of thank yous. So let's take a break, refuel. I'm going to hit some thank yous, and then uh, we'll, we'll get back to this podcast. Family Reunion Podcast. Woo! <laughs> Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission-free. While other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees, so you can trade stocks and keep all your profits. Plus, there's no account minimum deposit needed to get started, so you can start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy to understand charts and market data and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections such as 100 Most Popular. With Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio, discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners of the Doug Stanhope podcast a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. Sign up at stanhope.robinhood.com. That's stanhope.robinhood.com. All right. Uh, as you know, uh, Chaley's been gone for like seven weeks. The trailies, I should say, because Tracy is here making drinks, and uh, if I had to pick who I missed more, I'd say it behind your back, Chaley. No, you've said it in, in front of me. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. this time. No, I know all the time. Right. I, I know. I tell her that. I go, you realize he these. wants you there and not me, but it's a package deal, so you, you yeah, have, no, I you have you video to, that works. I want so. you to <laughs> produce the podcast yeah. and your one job. Can I, but, can, can I interrupt you for one second, Doug? Uh, Tracy, can I get a beer? I like the cheese here too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, if, uh, if uh, you're a listener out there thinking that Tracy's no good for anything but getting a beer to Chaley, well, to Chaley, you're right. But to me, <laughs> she's far more important to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's, again, uh, shit comes in, I lose it half the time anyway, over the course of seven weeks that Chaley's been gone, and we haven't, we've not we been doing evergreens, I'm just going to blow through what I could find and write down for today. Norm De Plume, which I, I love that name. He said, Wait, uh, that's really the name? Norm it, Well, it's not his real name, but I like the, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, if he That's Googled funny. it, he'd probably find a thousand other people that came up with the same clever idea. <laughs> yeah, but, Google. 
I'm I'm a, from a day and age where you thought you're the only one. That's a punk punk rock name. Yeah, he sent a he sent a uh, a nice note and a t-shirt. Dustin Trotter, bingo. This is the guy that sent the the uh, a photograph framed of Ichabod in the setting sun. It's a gorgeous picture. Oh, Meant a lot. I have it. it's right over there somewhere. Anyway, but yeah, you can oh, show, is, you can show that, that around. That is nice. How fucking nice is that? Rob Johnson, he's actually local. He's the one. Did I? Did you see the? He's a coin cutter, and I've never even heard of the expression. It's but, sad when these uh, people have to like do things to express their depression. <laughs> Does he cut his wrist with Rob- coins. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. I, I wanted to call him immediately and thank him, but he stuffed it in the mailbox. I was picturing it as like an Indian burn before it becomes a cut. You have to rub it for a while. Right, stick with me. Stick with right, me. Sorry. Oh, honestly, good. Rob Johnson from here in Bisbee. <laughs> What he does, I uh, fuck. I wish I could. Uh, <laughs> it's on the travel shelf somewhere, but it's the, not the point. The, what he, he took a half dollar, a JFK half dollar, and he he cuts it so that it it looks like JFK is smoking a joint with all the uh, the, the middle parts that you don't need to see. The negative space it's, cut out. Yeah, yeah, it's he's fucking incredible, and I want to. He oh, left it cool. in the mailbox. Hey, if you could mention this on a podcast, and I wanted to call him, going, "Hey, every podcast that's going out, they're evergreens until mid-April, so it's not that I'm not saying thank you." Yeah, oh, yeah it yeah, was yeah. fucking. It's one of the coolest <laughs> things ever. I don't know what to do with so you, it, but you, I'll find Oh, you do something. have it. I have okay. it. Oh, Fuck, great. Yeah, I yeah. have it. Yeah, I've, I've seen those. Oh, wait. Before. Here's his... Uh, if you want to see his work, go to petsalad.etsy.com. Rob Johnson. It's uh, It was phenomenal. And then even Andrew. He goes, yeah, I know Rob Johnson. And I'm like, well, I, I, I don't know how to say thank you. He's going to have to wait for weeks and weeks for the Chaleys and the Trailies to come well, back. Well, from- now it's here and it's out there forever. Go ahead, keep keep crying on the fucking podcast. There Go it, ahead, Meatwig. Hey, there it is. See right what there. happened to Ichabod. Look, look, there's the pic. There it is right there. Nice. That's George Washington. I, uh, I got a. Wow, JFK. he did a quarter. I like oh. those. That's fucking assuming as a CNC machine or some kind of a. No, I think it's done by like hand. Precision with oh, little wow. tiny. I saw it at uh, Art in the Park in Sierra Vista before. They had a uh, them mounted on a wallet like this. Yeah. Uh, he so said, and, uh, but it was like three hundred dollars for the wallet, and I was like, uh, "Hey, where do I just get the wallet?" And I bought the wallet for twenty five dollars, and they were all pissed off because I had no appreciation for art. But I did; I just didn't have any money. He said, with all humility, that he's considered the best coin cutter in the business, and I go, "Well, that's great because I've never heard of any other one, so you're definitely um, the best." And that was really cool. Mark from Mesa sent something. I don't know. I went through. We have a shelf here to throw all the thank yous. So sometimes I just found notes. And Mark from Mesa, Arizona sent something. I just found the note and not what he sent. (laughs) Bunster's Hot Sauce from Perth, Australia sent uh, three bottles of uh, hot sauce slash barbecue sauce. Nanny Nash sent uh, i can't even read my own hand oh oh the kids book uh yeah oh, i yeah you gave me a great idea and uh i'll probably forget to give you credit but it's in my notes <laughs> chris rummy also local he sent some blue rocks to bingo and uh probably something else i don't know john santo sent a book and i uh, i think he said he sent a book i don't know which one but he also i looked at the back of the note and it was a, a baby eating a, a dying bloody rat i had never seen that uh, oh on the back of the eight by ten note bird snatch <laughs> Uh, sent, they always bird snatch is great and they always send us weird shit. But one of the things I found in the pile of seven week old thank yous included in it key rings, which tomorrow I have to make up comedy condo keys. Oh, and yeah. yes, you will be on the, uh, Chuckleheads comedy condo keys. That's bird snatch. If you're a comic, you're playing here, you're staying at the comedy condo. 
Then uh, that's Bird Snatch's key ring. Dr. Elliot Watson sent me a book about unknown, uh, the unknown history of the Nazis, which at first I'm like, oh, I hope this isn't pro Nazi because it's a weird time and place and yeah. the wrong people might like me. But I, I thank you. Someone that we found thin blue lines. Oh, that's uh, it's a card that's, game. Thin it's blue a- line. ThinBlueLineGame.com Might have already talked about this. They've been around forever. Uh, let's uh, thank our own uh, 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 Havelina. I don't know if we ever use a real name, but mm. Super Boggle, because me and Kenny and uh, Valentina played Super Boggle forever. Thank you for that. And a cop Bible. Someone sent a cop Bible. It's not a stolen hotel Bible. It's kind of a, uh, 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 black molded, it's like a watermarked yeah. Bible from some guy that was, we hope it's water, doing a community service at a, a police substation. Orange County. It's got a great, yeah, that'll be in the next eBay yard sale. Yeah. And that's it for me, Chad. Oh, yeah, the weed people in oh, Alaska. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah um, kind of talked over you on that one, so I'll let you plug it again. Uh, the uh, the uh, Greatland Ganja uh, was there. Uh, Out of Kisilov, which is a long ways, but they had swag bags for all the people that showed up that were performing. great. Dude. And, of course, Cass, even though we weren't performing, they, yeah. they set us up with oh. passes, and he got off the plane, and there was weed for well, Chad. I swear. Alaskan what? Leaf is the other one, and I'll tell you right now, oh, there was good. so much uh, <laughs> uh, provided to me that I didn't even need to go purchase any, but I, yeah. next time I'm there, I will go to these places and buy some, but everybody was so generous. Yeah. Uh, That's, uh, it, we'll count on that. When we do a, a Bisbee comedy festival, not just a fun house. We did Farts Festival and kept it inside the fence. But now that Chuckleheads is open, yeah, I think we can get some shit going on. Uh, we do want to say thanks to Cass, Chilku Charlies, and AK Comics, and everyone else who sponsored, and all the comics that went up there. It was it was a blast, and it was their, the their inaugural people. event, and uh, it, it, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't do it again. Yeah, Bart and Boobs, all oh, the yeah. fucking cool people at Coots, fucking... I and last now, but not least... Oh, no, hold on. I what? got this. Oh. Someone sent me, uh, Jeremy sent me this <laughs> article, and uh, the only reason I'm even bringing it up is because it's about the TWA Hotel. Oh, I, I, I booked that. At JFK. Yep. They're opening a TWA Hotel that you had tickets to. At or, the airport, at JFK. Yeah. I've never seen that. Well, at- they're flying, they're trucking in from Maine a plane that was built, it was a constellation built Connie? by, by <laughs> Lockheed <laughs> by Lockheed in 1956 and was in service for years and then it eventually became a drug running plane <laughs> and it abandoned in Honduras. I, I got the email, hey, Connie is coming. Oh, I bet yeah, that's what it's that's talking it. about. Oh, yeah. They're trucking it from Maine where someone was going to try and refurbish it to JFK and it's going to be a bar. <laughs> One of my at the, biggest at the, at the hotel, uh, like to fly from here to anywhere in the Caribbean, you have to go through JFK to get a quick flight. And fuck JFK, it's awful. And there's no none of the airports there have an on site hotel. And when they said they're opening up a Mad Men era. TWA hotel on site at JFK. I booked the first night, May 15th, where now I'm going to be fucking working. So I had to cancel it. Oh. I am going to be there. If you want to see me in New York, I want them to open a comedy stage. <laughs> and I'm only going to work where I don't have to leave the fucking airport. So yeah, I saw that. That's great. Doug Stanhope on the Connie. <laughs> <laughs> That was Jeremy. So thanks, Jeremy. And then uh, some people have been sending us Bibles. I just yes. found a bunch of Bibles here. Yeah, we're going to so. be back on the road. After. Uh, uh, oh, shit. Before we bring Derek on, the dates. Well, we got bad information. Here's what happens. We use brown paper tickets as often as possible. Sometimes you can't. But sometimes... You can get an allotment of tickets from brown paper tickets, and the venue sells the rest. And brown paper tickets charges 
mostly nothing for a service fee. Everyone else fucks you. And we avoid it when we can. Other times we can't. So when we announced on last week's podcast, these dates were sold out. No, just the brown paper tickets. The venue still check with the venue. Call the venue and say but Irvine, Irvine and San Jose. I'll, I'll change the websites changed by now, right. but Irvine and San Jose. Our tickets on Brent Paper Tickets are sold out. You can still buy tickets from the venue. Yeah. I just listened to that on the way over here. Shaylee did say that exact thing. If it says sold out, go and Call check with the, the venue. venue because there is. But then Hennigan said there's one of them that is exclusively us. And the taping okay. in Vegas is sold out. But remember, if you live in Vegas, a lot of people panic and buy tickets and go, there's no way I can get to fucking Vegas. Yeah, they try and figure it out so, later. So, yeah. yeah, if you're in Vegas, just show up at the plaza, hang out, and uh, see if you can get in last minute. And if you can't, you should hang around the plaza. Fucking great hotel. If, if you like it's roulette, right. if you like roulette you'll see Doug. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's confusing. It's confusing sorry, to me. Yeah. I had to just, pull up the fucking thing. Yeah, don't listen to me or, or, <laughs> or, or, or other people that tweet it's sold out. Fucking uh, Paul Kimball. Hey, it sold out in San Jose. And I went, wow, that sold out quick. That's a huge room. No, it's not, Paul. It's not sold out. We changed and your wife is still <laughs> in the <laughs> act because I'm still doing that fucking act so I can tape it on May 25th in Vegas. And then I start from scratch again. Derek. Get over here, Derek. You know Derek for mayor. He never made it to mayor, but he made it to fucking cataracts at 40. Well, how old are you? 43. All right. Well, Hi. They, thanks for having me. Yeah. I, I, I verified. I don't trust anything Derek says. I think he's always lying or wrong. I, I can tell you right now, Derek and I are born the same year, and I think he's 44. I have a tattoo on me. I know. <laughs> well, no. I only lived nine days in 1975. Oh, yeah. I got you. Okay. You're later this year. Right. Yeah. So, Derek... Uh, <laughs> He has cataracts. I sent him to my optometrist. He found out he has cataracts. He told me, I'll be blind in a year. And I didn't believe him. But then I had an appointment the week after. And uh, <laughs> my, checked out my, his my optometrist. You asked him to violate HIPAA. <laughs> yes, <Mom. laughs> exactly. That's exactly. I think Stocks <laughs> broke that, brought that up. Stocks was like, hey, they can't tell you. He, he had an appointment later that day or something. My, my optometrist before this, when Tom, Tom's got some fucked up eyes, he won't. <laughs> so uh, I sent him to my optometrist and... Uh, Tom said, oh, yeah, he said you have the same uh, prescription for eye gl uh, eyeglasses as I do. And I go, well, that's a HIPAA violation, but I'm all for them. It works out in a small town. Violate my HIPAA, motherfucker. The first time I got a weed recommendation in town, the doctor was like, I play uh, poker with Doug Stanhope sometimes. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> what? Well, that's not a violation. I tell you no, no, no. It's with. just a small town. People know you, and I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah. I considered it that Doug would remind me later. Like, th tell him so he'll remind me. You know this moves? He can just this do that. He's fucking uh, he's, all over the map. He has got the Stevie Wonder Stevie role Wonder thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not yes. the only one who he's, saw that. He's shaking his head. But earlier, he's like, he's looking at how much he's raised on his GoFundMe from a distance. Oh. Again, why I'd never believe Derek. 5,280, uh, that's a mile. <laughs> def definitely, I, def oh. definitely a mile. Definitely. Def def definitely a mile. Definitely a mile. Definitely a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you guys could just tell me weave in my head back. And what? That was the no, funny no, part. No, no, no. You both did it in unison. Both you I'm and Shaylee. I'm not doing it on purpose. No, not you. <laughs> Shit. Oh. Shaylee and... Uh, he couldn't uh, see that we were doing it anyway. Right. <laughs> You're doing a Stevie... Uh, Stevie Wonder, Wonder Rain Man. Stevie, kind of a Rain Man thing. Stevie too. Rain Man. Yeah. Stevie Rain Man. I'm just here to thank everybody. That's that's I all that. I want to do is thank well, everybody let, so much. Did, for what? For... Uh, Give me sight. Well, no, Deb Stocks. Yeah, our Dave. old our, our old fun stalker. But maybe this is where we go out of the break. Is Omar in London? <laughs> uh, stocks, our old stalker who moved back to unstalk us because now she's with Raider. 
Who knows who she stalks poorly now? She started to go fund me for Derek because he has cataracts and they only cover not enough. And so when I have tweeted it, I have, we bust Derek's balls, but Derek has been here for a million things. He's the only reason Meatwig is alive. He's done a thousand things around here. So all of you old fucking Bisbee, hey, can I stop by your house? Derek was the one who cleaned up before and after you. He's He's been integral up until he wasn't when he got into an abusive relationship. And then he was integral into fun stories for the podcast for domestic abuse, fucking police beat, notoriety. and I didn't. I didn't have any money to give because I'm as poor as Derek. But I retweeted it every time I fucking saw it for sure. Derek is one of the first people that befriended me here. Like fucking, uh, you know. Here's you know. Hey, it was my job, motherfucker. Yeah. Well, I didn't care. It was just my job. Well, Just keeping tabs on you. You did all right with it. <laughs> you and you and Kenny. Who? Oh, we, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was when you guys were in charge of security. In charge of security. So, yeah, he, he still needs more. Now he just got the first eye done. Well, why do you need more than that? Because he's got a second eye that's bad. And now the first eye, our doctor, I, I'm not going to mention my eye doctor's name because we just talked a lot about HIPAA violations. <laughs> uh, uh, side it's in note. Mexico. Side note. I, I do why is it a HIPAA violation? Uh, when I've had things done, and my friends were doing them. I'm just, I'm trying to keep this as vague as yeah, possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Send me pictures of shit while I'm out. And they sent it in the email titled uh, HIPAA Violation yeah. Part 1 of pictures they took of me because I asked them to. Uh, but why is it like someone gets their fucking head run over by a train and they're in a coma and then they're posting pictures in the news? Like if it's newsworthy. Uh, here's a picture of them fucking their eyes swollen out. Well, they couldn't give you. Yeah, yeah. well, it, 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 it happened in to, public. It, it happened. They out didn't in, say no. No, yeah. no they're, they're <laughs> hospital pictures. <laughs> fucking Olin Mills comes in and starts taking fucking eight by tens and wallet size of you in a fucking coma. How is that okay to take? I couldn't give permission. Of Once you're dead, they can release them. But, but not, you're not, not dead necessarily when they take true. Them. Not necessarily true. I mean, it, I don't I even understand what circumstance you, you guys are even talking about. When does Olin Mills show up at the hospital right, and start not, taking pictures? That setup joke is soft the Olin blue Mills. Mills. I understand it's that, but I don't understand it's the, point the actual is, when, if, if you show up in, in, in a coma in a hospital room, or you know, and then they have photographs of you with your head like a fucking pumpkin and. You know, how is it like okay the, to take pictures of you? Like the ones we took of Bingo? Yes. <laughs> yes. Because yes, we're, we're exactly. not the doctor taking the picture and posting it. The HIPAA violation is, is, the, is the confidentiality between the uh, okay. doctor and a patient. Right. Let's get down to light bulb in the asshole. Everyone's seen the x-ray photos doctor of a fucking fake. It's not my butt. Fake, fake news. Are you fake going news. fake news? No, no. A, 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 you can Photoshop photos. that easy. I'm saying doctor patient confidentiality goes as far as the doctor. Uh, I'll just show you. No, this don't ever think there's a lawyer client, doctor client confidentiality. Because if the story's funny, they're going to tell one person and don't show this to anyone else. Oh, oh I got, I, sure. I, I'll tell you, I. My teeth were pulled, my wisdom teeth. I had four wisdom teeth. My brothers were also pulled by the same doctor. He was a specialist in Orange County, and he had a lot of uh, landscaping that needed to be done. And we traded landscaping work, my brother and I, for getting the wisdom teeth pulled. He has a book with the black stuff across the eyes. <laughs> and uh, he's, yeah, he was a specialist when people got their face smashed, like run over. He was the constructive guy that came in. He was the dental team. And there, th he has a book that I would not look at that had shit like that. Die also, laughing, I also the original cover I also of assisted. Laughing. I also assisted after hours with my brother's extraction. 
he had me holding the suction <laughs> thing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I mean, I'm, I'm monked out. My, my, I'm like this, right? And, and I'm, I'm holding the things a little yeah. to the right. I got an 8.30 abortion <laughs> next door. You, you busy at 8.30? Hey, good hands, Shaley. Good hands. Uh, yeah. Oh, you I used like to sell you, vacuum cleaners? Oh, I like you hold that suction <laughs> still like that. I'm going to be the scraper. You're going to be the sucker. Yeah. Couple, Seller couple, rainbow. Couple 24-inch box trees. A 48-inch box. All right, I'm, I'm done. Look, 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 no ten percent commission on everyone. <laughs> I did figure something out. I want to thank my doctors uh, and their assistants. Everybody's so nice. They were so nice to me, and they all knew my name, and they all were friendly, and everything was. Actually, I had fun with the surgery. What up? Uh, what, what, <laughs> what's your name again? <laughs> I'll call my doctor. Never mind. Hey, like, him, what hey, was what's the, this guy's name? What was the procedure that you had done? They replaced my cornea in my left eye with a piece of plastic. So they made a small incision. Well, they they they, they used a laser. Made a they cut the whole a circle around my retina, and then they uh, I I want to talk about how fun it was. Like I'm a stoner, so Sir, they, uh, can they, I treat him as a hostile witness? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right? yeah. Answer the fucking always. question. Well, you're always. asking him pointless. No one yeah, cares about. Always. I want to know. I thought they yeah. cut a, a slit in the side and then insert and then rolled insert, up. Insert it, it rolled, rolled it up, up and then inserted it. You're saying they cut like a disc out. From your your eye, yes. The laser that they used is the was the extra cost was because it was used because I'm Star so Wars young movie. that that <laughs> they they wanted to do uh, you know the upgraded laser to make us it made a circle. What you're telling me is you don't know what they slit. did. Okay, go well, ahead. Yes, go thank ahead. you. I told them to fucking. I that's why I brought stocks. That's just, why I brought stocks. No, funny. all we need to do <laughs> is funny. let me let me carry it from here. We started to go fund me, or you, stocks did. I retweeted it. You got enough money for one eye. Now you have a problem. Who gives a fuck? We'll get to it on another podcast. Yes, the GoFundMe <sighs> is still in play for Ooh. the other eye. And once they're both perfect, you got a fucking lot of work to do around here. <laughs> I bought a piece of shit car, and you swore you could fucking fix it. And no, it's not a big thing. Oh, you just need a motor for your uh, power window. Oh, I can't do it because I'm blind. Now you're more blind, and you, but you still do need. I fat checked his story. If you want to, fucking just fucking five bucks. That's the last thing I tweeted. Hey, if I asked you if you would give me five bucks, would you do it? Then do it on this GoFundMe for Derek. Chaley, tell them how to find it. Well, if you go to GoFundMe, you can just type in Cash for Cataracts. Cash for Cataracts and it will come up. The direct site is GoFundMe.com slash... Wait. Why is there a fucking F in there? <laughs> GoFundMe.com slash F slash Cash dash four dash Cataracts. So I would just search cash for cataracts. Yeah, yeah just that's do fucking that. ridiculous. It'll show up. Please yeah, rewind yeah. that three times so we can play it over and over. Oh, you can't get... see it now again. No, You're, shut up, Derek. Just get up <laughs> before you ruin everything. <laughs> like a hundred bucks is the next time I'm back here. Derek has darker sunglasses and a cane <laughs> and beads. <laughs> it's a lot Corn more. Rose with yeah. beads. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant he's selling beads like the dudes in Vegas. <laughs> And, and, and all all of the cane and the beads and the whole disguise came out of his cash for cataracts GoFundMe. <laughs> it's a lot more expensive than I thought it would be. And uh, there was a guy on uh, Twitter that some alleged doctor, Brendan Walsh, is also a doctor on Twitter and a lawyer, Dr. and Trevor a lawyer. I can hook you up with someone cheaper. <laughs> Why do you have to spend that much for cash? That's what he has available. And he can't drive. Fucking, oh, this is bullshit. You should get it cheaper than that. He's getting what he can get. So thank you, everyone who donated. Thank you so much. I we can't express how much I appreciate sight. Shaley did exp uh, look it up earlier, and uh, veterinarians do the same stuff. For, yeah, vet uh, tech probably do in cheaper. the hundreds. Oh, well, when I threatened to go to Mexico, they really panicked. <laughs> but I wasn't threatening to go to Mexico as I wanted to, but it was like, I think I can get this done in Mexico for sure. Medical tourism will be on that on another podcast. 
for now, let's get Derek the fuck out of here. I want to say thanks <laughs> Thank to Jeremy. You, thanks for the shirt that I'm wearing. Thanks, Stocks. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Derek really does. Derek, everybody. Der- Derek, <laughs> Derek is really appreciative, and he did uh, cry tears he may never see when a lot of you showed up on That's, GoFundMe. That is very uh, generous. I, uh, the, right on. You guys are fucking pretty cool. Let me just segue. Despite my hatred of people. <laughs> Stocks. If you're a long-time listener, you know Stocks. We use Stalker with an asterisk now. Uh, not real Stalkers, but when I was in uh, London... Last week. Got done the first uh, day of filming on the Friday. I get back. It's a weird thing, and you've been around for this, where, like, Fitzsimmons is the one podcast that stands out, where, like, all right, you you go to L.A. and you do a bunch of podcasts, but that's their job. Here, we do a podcast. If someone, a friend of ours, comes in to do the podcast, we're so remote. That means they're staying the night and partying like Chrysler and shit. And so you do like an L.A. podcast, I did Burrs and Fitzsimmons, and and you just get into it and you're there for an hour. And then like, all right, got to go. Bye. And they jump in a car before you could get an Uber. <laughs> like, I'm geeked up uh, to see a friend of mine. That's just how it works. So well, you're was- usually promoting something. You've got a bunch of them stacked. you got to go to another one. Yeah. I had to go from Burrs to Kreischer's. Kreischer actually hung out with the family, but that's not... Point being, mm-hmm. when I got done filming this thing with uh, Carl Pilkington, all right, you know, your car's waiting for you. You get done your last line. Grab your shit. The car's waiting to... Bum rush? So, well, no, they have other shit to film. I'm just not involved. Oh. So I go back <clears throat> to this hotel, which when I showed up, Hennigan had already looked up the hotel they put me at. Allegedly a five-star hotel by someone's... Hennigan was not with you. No. I I found this out later. He looked it up before I got there, and he goes, I I looked up the bar at your hotel. It looks like Liberace's waiting room. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Fucking gold faucet handles it was just ridiculous but it was nice enough and a smoking room i don't know if i said this last week no but, oh yeah a smoking room in london your hotel room was a smoking room. yeah wow or it was liberace's oh no room. i i emailed gump is here i emailed gump because gump's catchphrase is sounds like a plan and you go that's that's not a plan <laughs> i gump i i said that uh i'm i'm gonna go to safeway uh, do you need anything? Nope. Sounds like a plan. That's not a plan. It was a question. I don't know why you always say sounds like a plan. So I check into this hotel and the front desk lady, Simona, brings me up to my room unnecessary, especially because I don't have any British money to tip you. I assume I have to tip, but I don't have it. A dollar and, stronger anyway. And she goes, well, what is your day like? And I go, I just flew in. I'm just going to drop my, my shit. <laughs> in the room, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to smoke a cigarette, and then I'm going to go sleep. And she said, in a thick Polish accent, Simona said, sounds like a plan. <laughs> I go, oh, fuck. you're killing oh, me. No. So I go outside to smoke that cigarette, and this giant lurch concierge you rang. comes out and goes, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Do you want us to move you to the smoking room? And I I, I lifted my hands I, like my team had just won the Super Bowl, I, and I leapt up his seven-foot frame and hugged him, I, wrapped my legs I, around him. I, I pictured angelic sounds and la- no! <laughs> I heard them. I heard those sounds. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> so it was the most gaudy hotel. Uh, uh, so uh, that was Thursday noonish that I had landed. All right, I'm still working off the Xanax. I can sleep through. 
the night I'll be ready for my 8 a.m. wake up to do my lines on set. So I do Friday it was two days of filming. Friday off, Saturday, Sunday, hang out with Joby and Hack. I don't know if we've talked about that. He's tweeted a little bit. I yeah. saw it a little bit. Yeah, and then Monday. So I have a but. The Friday, I get through the first day of filming, and then immediately, oh, your, your car is ready. You, you can go. And I get back to my hotel, and the hotel phone rings. And I, hello? Is this Doug? Is this really Doug Stanhope? I had tweeted, there's a bar around the corner. Thursday afternoon, no the producer way. showed no up way. to just give me the beats of what we're going to be doing through the weekend. Yeah. The producer's there, and uh, he goes, by the way, there's a, a, a bar, Stanhope Arms, right around the yeah. corner. I'm like, oh, I, I'll rally to go have one drink there to say I did, and I went to Stanhope Arms and met some people, and they're all fucked up, and it was funny and but I took a picture and I tweeted it. And I they had also left me a bottle of champagne in the room from the production company. Thanks for being part of this. Like, they went way too far with making me at home. So I had tweeted those two pictures. This guy was in the lobby. He had put together Stanhope Arms Bar versus something Proximity. in the background of the hotel picture. Found out where I was staying, and now it's he's like <laughs> all the room. I go, no, listen, I, I'm lying, but I go, I I get the production company on the other line and with my cell phone. I can't talk, but no, I, no, no, just email me. No, but what if email I call me? you ten minutes from now? Will you? I go, no, no, I won't. C- email me, and then I pour myself my own drink in my smoking room. Why would I go to a fucking bar? When I have a smoking room and duty-free cocktails Mm. in my own room. I'm relaxing. Ten minutes later, ring. Listen, I don't want to sound creepy, but... I'm sorry, I'm doing... Wait, Hannigan called you? (laughs) Yeah, I I caught myself. (laughs) And I go, no, he's... uh, And then I I said, all right, I'll I'll be down in a minute. (laughs) Oh well, he, uh, sure. I'll, I'll buy you drinks, and I, I swear I'm not. Creepy. Oh, he's there. I he's thought in he's, the fucking I lobby. Thought, of I the- thought someone from America had figured out where you were uh, and just was pranking you, like just calling you and fucking with you. No, and he he was a kid, and I did make him buy me expensive uh, drinks. Sure, uh, in the. Uh, <laughs> Liberace's waiting room bar and it, it was like Liberace meets the shining it was like a dark that's what I said I, I said it was like a gay bar in the shining your money's no good here Mr. <laughs> Torrance <laughs> and we were the only two people in this bar on a Friday night just me and him and the bartender. And the bartender is even saying, he's a good fan because he's Polish too. They're all mm-hmm. Eastern yeah, European. Yeah. The producer said, we've put other actors up at this hotel. And they go, it's very English for a hotel. It's a very English, except there's no English people that work <laughs> there. They're all Eastern European, which is fine. And he's like, he's a good fan. He knows... Because the kid's telling me all of my work he loves. <laughs> yeah, he knows you. You're a good fan. Yeah, good, his uncle was a bartender. Yeah. <laughs> so so at, at, at some point. You take him home, make him gump. <laughs> <laughs> you do, right? You do, right? No drink charge. No drink. He's <laughs> good gump. <laughs> at some point, I said, all right, that's a, I don't need any more drinks. Come up to the room. I'll sign something for you, which was uh, if you were here for March 20th. 25th open mic. Uh, Kelly from Vavoom brought me those barf bags with the caricature of a thing. And I go, I'm going to stick these in the plane seats oh, yeah? where barf bags go. I had one. I signed it for him. I go, well, let's take, get in the bed. We'll take selfies so you can say you were in my bed in my hotel room. And he's a good kid. So, yeah, yeah make the story weirder. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then I go, all right, now you got to get the fuck out. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was Omar, the stalker that was very nice. He kept apologizing for being drunk, but he didn't seem it. He's good yeah. drunk. 
I go, you, you, nice stuff. Well, I had to get best. some Dutch courage to even do this. I, I, That's what he said, Dutch courage? Yes. Interesting. It's, a, it's, an, uh, it's an expression over there. You know, uh, I know you don't listen to your podcast or visit your website, but on episode 306, two weeks ago, I used that one tweeted picture with that gal you met out in front of the Stanhope Arms. Oh. <laughs> that was the picture. Oh, no. I got him out. Like, I fucking wanted credit because these two chicks, it was afternoon. It was like three in the afternoon on a Thursday, and they're singing, and their teeth are just like almost black red oh. from red wine, and everyone's annoyed by them, and I I was the drunk whisperer. I got them <laughs> out of the bar. They were they were behind they were uh, the, the the Stanhope Arms uh, mosaic window. What do, what do you call that? It's like it's not uh, stained glass. It's not stained glass, but it's like that. They have that. So I'm excuse me. Can I take a picture of that window? Because you're in front of it. Your booth is in front of it. But I need a picture. Yeah, <laughs> fucking with their giant red stained teeth and. <laughs> And they were just so I lured him out with uh, uh, the threat of a cigarette. Would you like an American spirit? Ooh. Let's go outside and smoke because I know they'll continue on. And then I expected adulation when I got back. Uh, I got rid of those uh, ladies. I, I would I would watch an, an opposite of a bar rescue show where you just went in. And got drunk fuckers to leave <laughs> happily by pied pipering them yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. A diplomat. Thank you. That's the name of the show. <laughs> the diplomat. Where Stanhope Pied Pipers drunk people out of bars and the whole staff applauds him. <laughs> I'm Doug Stanhope. I've been in bars for 30 years. Today with me is professional <laughs> diplomat Chad Shank. He's gotten rid of fucking weird bikers from the house. He's gotten rid of stalkers. He's gotten rid Today, what do you think of these two broads? <laughs> <laughs> Wine stained teeth. Singing. You're so vain. <laughs> the top of their lungs. Easy no, they mark. started with Whitney Houston. Anyway. <laughs> So uh yeah, that was uh that was my venture out. I don't know where I was. Sorry. No, but you were across the street and you actually went left the hotel and didn't do something you were supposed to do. I had to do stand up never do that. once. You never do that. And then when Joby and Hack came down from Nottingham a couple of days because Joby's no, like, no. the the cigarette Cigarettes for Joby. <laughs> it sounds like Live Aid. <laughs> Cigarettes for Joby. Yeah, the, there's another GoFundMe. The, yeah. No, the uh, yeah. the address. I don't know that, that. I mean, I put it on the show notes last week, and they'll be in the show notes until he comes back. But uh, I don't. Did is, did you double check that with them? I wrote it down when he said. Okay, it. Right. so that's what it is. All right. No, cigarettes someone's getting cigarettes. Of a, <laughs> uh, <sighs> they came down. Uh, we try to go to Stanhope Arms on a Saturday, Friday, Saturday in the UK. They are, it's a nine to five, Monday through Friday country. And Friday, Saturday are fucking intolerable. Mm. It's just the biggest assholes. It's like Mardi Gras for a weekend. And then Monday morning, everyone's back to polite. But Friday, Saturday, just the <laughs> most New Year's Eve, oh, no. St. Patrick's Day, stupid fucking <laughs> assholes. Locals? So we went to, uh, is it all locals? We went back. Yeah, yeah. Just the general populace. Every weekend is a holiday. And oh. Monday through Friday is, oh, no, how, how can I help you? <laughs> I can only do Hennigan at this point. <laughs> We appreciate it because at least my, we know you're doing something I, European. I turned my head to laugh so only Shaylee can see me, but I guess you knew I was laughing at your uh, English accent. They That's get Hennigan. down you know, mid-afternoon on Saturday, and uh, yeah, I, I got nothing to say, so we go to Stanhope Arms, but now it's Saturday afternoon, so it's mobbed. Oh, uh, soccer's on, right? They, they didn't seem to be looking at anything other than <laughs> uh, we just walked in and went, all right, I've already done this. How about we fuck off? And we found sushi, which at 3.30 in the afternoon is empty. So we had great sushi, nice time, went back to the hotel, 
went downstairs, whatever. Yeah, we drank duty free <laughs> up in the room. Went downstairs for happy hour, and there was one chick there that was very drunk. Sorry, hack, but you fucking tweeted this that I was a social justice warrior trying to keep you off a drunk chick. But when a chick's that drunk at like six thirty, we said this earlier in this podcast. The hot chick and yeah, you be a gentleman and you walk Listen, away. Hack tweeted that and he included a picture of himself. <laughs> any any chick drunk enough to want to fuck hack, you gotta throw some consideration uh, her way. She was an American from Mizzou. Yeah. yeah. And I'm from Mizzou. We were having fun. There was another table. To be fair, of- if I wasn't married, I'd have banged that chick. <laughs> But that's coots in the middle of the night where everyone's fucked up. This was the Liberace Museum of five yeah, people. Yeah, that's the chick I was talking about. <laughs> I would have banged that chick. Oh, no, no, you probably wouldn't have. Oh, yeah, probably. The hack was, I don't, I don't know. I was, I was trying to be the voice of reason. Yeah. That was on your Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he took the picture or had Joby take it and then tweeted it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was probably nine thirty at night where I, I <laughs> passed out. Nap. I'm going to bed. We yeah. had a nice time. They went to the casino afterwards. Texted me in the morning, going, "You did the right thing by going to bed." Yeah, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. I am ex. But first. Are you experienced? <laughs> have you ever been experienced? I, yeah, I at Coots, that. where you guys <laughs> have not <laughs> been, evidently. We, yeah, we I have. It's just not in the norm. It's been in the norm enough for me to know I have to do lines. Absolutely. No, sorry. I have to read acting lines. Work. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you were going to have to do lines if you went. <laughs> no, you were doing you, lines. You would have to do lines them. if you went. I'd have made you. <laughs> I know. I I had it whenever you said talked about your fucking hotel that you said started off with a supposedly whatever star. I stayed in a hotel in Phoenix on my way to Alaska that was uh, supposedly I think it was three. Three stars? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it was just decent. That- like, uh, days in uh, airport in, which was actually a 13 mile Uber ride from the airport, which is a misleading fucking uh, yeah. name. Oh, that's for a, a fucking uh, yeah. uh, uh, air uh, for a motel. Sky Harbor but is was, like ringed it was, with uh, it was airport hotels. Yeah. Uh, and the $13 Uber ride was worth it. But it was uh, when I say. Wait, some- you said 13 mile. $13 is different than 13 mile. Did I say both? <laughs> You said, yeah. you said, <laughs> not you at the said, same time. You said mile, which is not anywhere near the airport. <laughs> you know, it was, it was like 13 miles. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. It was a, you had to get on the freeway and go for a long time. I split it with a dude I met on the bus the first trip over. <laughs> so and, you're uh, like, it was Andy, you meet people but, when you need to. Well, you to. don't have, you can't help me to. Well, when I, oh, fuck. When I first went to go get on the bus, I had to go. I was flying out of Phoenix to go to Alaska, uh, but I didn't want to. I, I didn't. I didn't want to bother Jenny to take me to Phoenix. That's a long drive to go back yeah. and forth. So I told her, there's a Greyhound that leaves from Sierra Vista and goes to Phoenix. <laughs> oh wait, this is so, so good. Hang on, I read the, your I, series of tweets. I think this is back, on your way back. Yeah. Of you and having life, to take a Greyhound I, bus, I, I, and I'm like, this is fucking brilliant. I live tweeted my Greyhound trip. <laughs> All One of, thing I hate I about started, Twitter. I started it off with there are so many people in this Greyhound station with tardive dyskinesia that I thought I accidentally walked into a dance party <laughs> knowing that nobody would get that fucking joke and hoping you would see it. I, uh, You know that that's in my act right <laughs> now. Uh, have I, but uh, the one thing I hate about Twitter, because that feed that I read of you coming back on the bus... You you he you see the the last page first and like oh wow I wish there's a way to flip this so you could 
I always tweet, I always tweet them in a thread, so you should be able to show the thread and see from the beginning. Well, I, yeah, I do yeah. it in the easiest way. You just don't understand how to do things. <laughs> I get it. No, I click on so, it's like at HD email my Fatty, <laughs> and then I read what you've written. So <laughs> anyway, so the the way up. Well, I showed up. I I, I was going to go up the day before. Um, to go to the uh, Phoenix you had to You had to well, because well, you didn't know how you were going to get there and you needed to do the Greyhound. Well, I didn't. I definitely w- didn't want to depend on Greyhound the day of my of flight. Day of, which turns which out. Which turns out I was absolutely <laughs> fucking right in. I, so I went there and showed up at 10 a.m. to get on the Greyhound. In and Sierra they, Vista? In Sierra Vista. At the, just the regular bus transit, like Sierra Vista transit. They have nothing yeah. to do with Greyhound. It's just the Greyhound stops. It's where the, it's a, a, a lot big enough for a, a bus to pull in. So there, I pull in there and the, the, uh, the, the lady goes, there's no, she goes, oh, another one for the early bus. She goes, there is no early bus. I go, well, what does that mean? There is no early bus. <laughs> I bought a ticket like two weeks ago. What does that mean there is? She goes, that's what she explained to me. She's like, we have nothing to do with Greyhound. Here's the number to call. I call the number and the lady says, uh, what's your, you know, confirmation number? All the regular shit. Yeah. And then she says, uh, um, okay, uh, I don't know where your bus is. Sorry. <laughs> I go, no, no, you don't. You don't get to end a call like that. Unless it I, was, unless it was this, sorry, wrong number. The, yeah, this is, uh, this is, and so meanwhile, and now I'm completely playing to the fucking back of the room, which is a thing I learned fucking hanging out with you. I'm completely not focused on the phone call. I'm only making everybody else in the room laugh because I'm going, you can't, I'm a, you, do you, re, do you realize I'm a customer and you can't just say, I'm sorry, I don't know where your bus is and hang up on me i need resolution with this is there a later bus i can get is there sir i am sorry i all i can tell you is what i can see and i don't know where your bus is thank you no <laughs> no you don't you don't so i go through this whole fucking the thing malaysia 370 you <laughs> i go through this whole thing with her and she's she f- <laughs> Sorry, I almost spit some uh, cocktail when Chaley said the Malaysia 370. Go ahead, she says. She tries to end the call finally. Oh, no, that was what it was. Is I said, she goes, um, I don't, your bus is not scheduled to leave until 1035. So uh, technically your bus is not late until 1035. But meanwhile, we were supposed to board at 10 a.m. You know, the bus gets there before, you know. And so I go, okay. I go, so that's six minutes from now. You can either connect me with a supervisor or I can just keep talking to you for six minutes <laughs> until you tell, sir, like she's all exasperated. I don't know what you want me to do, sir. I want you to tell me what I'm supposed to do. I need to know what's happening. Gets me the supervisor who tries the same thing. This is all I know, sir. I can only tell you what I know. Your bus is not late. So I'm saying, so I can call you back at 1035. Yes. I go, okay. Now it's three minutes. I'm going to stay on the phone. And she tries to end the call. Sir, thank you very much. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah. So I fucking lose my <laughs> shit. Is there anything else you can, you haven't helped me one bit <laughs> this whole time. I understand that you have a script to read, but sometimes do you understand that it's okay to go off? The script and the, you've not helped me for 20 minutes. And the whole back of the bus station is fucking cracking up. <laughs> and, uh. A bunch of people who also can't get to Phoenix. One other dude who's in the getting on the bus. Uh, Wait, is this Benson? Service. 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 So, uh, finally I, I, I get off the phone because I know there's no more squeezing the joke out. I already know there's no answer. Um, but then I started tweeting fucking. Hey, fucking Greyhound, what the fuck? This is the answer I got. And immediately I started getting replies back. And uh, I ended up getting on a four o'clock bus and fucking being able to go the long way to fucking... Uh, it was beautiful. Those three three of us on this bus, we went through uh, Patagonia, Senoida, oh, nice. uh, Rio Rico. Yeah, that's a good trip. Up the freeway. Border Patrol got on the bus. I had like four joints. <laughs> I tucked him in my boot. Oh, you t- you tweeted it. That was the way back. 
No, no, no. That was but I did have a joint incident on the way back too. <laughs> Two joints. Yeah, I found those. Um, but uh, we go up to Tucson and hit, and we had like twenty five minutes. And I go, I'm gonna go smoke a joint real quick. And so I go run across the street and smoke a joint. And it's the Tucson bus station is one of the grossest things until i saw the phoenix bus station <laughs> it was one of the grossest by degrees things it was worse until I ever seen. but i was across the street at an abandoned building where i could just smoke a joint and i was like you know you see where homeless people slept nearby and stuff and i go to walk back and as i'm walking back by i see the biggest pile of puke no. i've ever seen in my life just like I didn't even realize it was puke for the first couple of seconds that I saw it because it was so. Oh, you did that thing where you like you looked like, harder. Hey, that looks like a big, and I was like, "Oh, that is that's oh, that's <laughs> disgusting." And I started to walk in about three feet past that was a similar sized but different consistency pile of puke. And then I looked up past and I realized that about every three feet. <laughs> was just a giant pile of fucking drunk bum puke. Oh. I wanted to take a picture so that I could tell this story, you know, with evidence, and yeah. I could not Kenny bring- did that gallon jug of milk thing. <laughs> oh, it was fucking horrendous. It's funny you bring this up, Chad, because when I had to travel on the BBC's dime... They booked me on Delta, but but you request that, right? I I requested I mean, you, it, and you they, should. They did, but the problem was There's- when they they fly you first class to London from Tucson, you get Delta to LAX, and then LAX to Heathrow, eleven hours. You didn't have to stop. That's in- Virgin Atlantic. So I fly first class. On Delta for an hour and 20 minutes to LAX. Go. I saw Roxy and Jeff, our people at Terminal 3. Absolutely. And uh, in the, Roxy in the said, sky miles hey, probably. do you have a backing for that pin? I lost the backing. <laughs> well, first I went, because I'm switching to Virgin Atlantic, I went to the Virgin Atlantic Lounge. They don't have all that fresh made snacks. They just have beautiful chairs and cocktails, but none of the great snacks. So I went, hey, fuck this. It's very much like your Greyhound trip. I went, fuck <laughs> this. So similar. I'm so going to go over and see Roxy and Jeff at the Terminal 3 LAX Lounge. And I, I, but of you were course. in five. You were in five, weren't you? Or the international terminal? That's at the end of LAX. No, no, no. Just like when we went to Costa Rica, they fly. Uh, it's Bradley Terminal yeah. is international. Yeah. So I didn't get the really nice one okay. where they serve filet mignon, which I was fucking heartbroken and probably made a few calls to Hennigan, <laughs> like you probably did on your Greyhound trip. <laughs> We so bounce back there. and forth. I got more to tell, but it relates. So <laughs> well, we can no, go back I, and forth. How much puke did you see on your trip, Doug? Not enough, because <laughs> when I get on Virgin Atlantic, you know when you have the lay down cubicle in first class? Sure, where you just hit sure. a button and all of a sudden you're reclined with a beautiful blanket and pillow and in flight entertainment. I'll just go with it sure. because I know you want me to say yes. <laughs> well, no. No, they don't have. Virgin Atlantic, you oh, still have they to. Don't have that? Yeah, you have to like get out of bed to make it in. Or you get out of your chair to make it into a bed. Oh, and I'm bed. like, what the heck is up with oh. this? The temerity. <laughs> I don't know what that word means, but <laughs> on Delta, I could have someone come over with a dictionary, or it might and be a, a vodka. <laughs> I had to. Get out of my bed and then take my uh, gourmet dinner at the four-seat bar because no one was sitting at the bar. So I ate my dinner by myself at the four-seat bar so they could manually make it into a bed. Fluff your pillow. Yeah. Yeah, they had to do that. I can fluff my own pillow, I says, if my mouth wasn't full. (laughs) With the lay mignon. (laughs) But on Oh, oh, that's the other thing. I had to take a bus. Listen to this. Because Delta and Virgin Atlantic are not, they're partners, but they're not the same airline. 
You know, in LAX, well, that, we had to take the bus to switch terminals. Uh, to oh, move yeah, from yeah. one terminal to the other. But I'm yeah. on upper class, but since they don't communicate, so I you, had to take the same bus. They didn't send the fucking Porsche like they do oh, to drive you across a yeah, tarmac. You, you, it was you, fucking hell. But you go tell your uh, story, it, and then I'll get back to you, the return flight. You say bus, and it's it, it's so tainted now, the, the term bus. So, but I know what you're talking about, like a tram. It's a shuttle. Yeah, yeah a like tram. a comfortable tram. tram. Yeah. yeah. So I had the... Uh, you were at seeing uh, vomit on the ground every three paces. Go ahead. <laughs> I ran from the vomit like a, a kid on Friday the 13th fucking running <laughs> from Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it's like. It was bad. So I get, But I get back onto the bus and... Uh, the Greyhound. The Greyhound bus to go Tucson to Phoenix. And this is the... Uh, I'll read you the text that I texted to Stanhope. Tucson to Phoenix now. The bus is no longer empty. Lots of kids. The one directly in front of me is either deaf or autistic, but I'm guessing both. Pretty sure the guy behind me and to the right has whooping cough, and it's starting to affect me the same way your head itches if someone talks about lice. And it wasn't just me. People all over the bus were fucking... Sure. Uh, uh, started to cough after this fucking guy kept fucking coughing it up. So I made it. That wasn't bad. It was only like two hours. I but, had but the, the, the I goal was it, to get to Phoenix, stay in a hotel, and then you had an early morning flight or uh, afternoon flight. No, no, I had an afternoon, afternoon flight. Three flight o'clock the following To get day. to Anchorage. So for me, as long as I got to uh, to the hotel like 10 at night, which was fine with me, I didn't care yeah. because I had plenty of time to get to the hotel the next day. This uh, it was the Quality Inn Airport uh, uh, Hotel in Phoenix. In Phoenix, that was not anywhere near, and it, I think it was three. But I'm going to show you a picture that nobody else can see, but that I can describe. This was the lock on my door. <laughs> it was completely busted in half where it had been kicked in. Like some, like somebody, where somebody had kicked the lock. It's like a bicycle lock. It, it's the it's the one that you flip across the regular. You know the one that oh, you the open bar, the door. Bar the, door. the bar. Right, right. It's the bar. But look at the sides of the bar. It's completely. I thought that was half. an X-ray of Derek's cataract. Not guy. only, not only. <laughs> Wait, that it, was up his ass. Not only is it shattered <laughs> in half, but there are two separate areas above it that you can see where the screw holes are punched completely out yeah, where yeah. this door has been kicked in well at least no, three at times at least yeah, three yeah. times one two and three I, st- <laughs> I started to wonder that's for the old folks <laughs> the, when I checked in she was like you know you're over here because I had uh, got a room uh, like a week before I knew I was doing this whole thing so she's like, you're all right on the uh, first floor right around the corner <laughs> We call it the here, kick out. <laughs> which I should have said yes. But I'm not a traveler, so I don't know to say yes. Give me the first floor room around the corner. I was like, unless you got a room where I... Because I wanted to smoke weed like immediately. That's all I had in my mind. So I'm like, unless you have a room with like a balcony that I can step off and enjoy the night air... <laughs> and uh, and then all of a sudden I get into this room and I go, I think I said code words <laughs> that I was not aware of that I said. You said too but much. But it was nice because had I been there with my family and had that room, uh, and the door is also destroyed completely yeah. uh, around this whole lo- uh, lock. Had I been there with my family, there's a, there's a cartoon silhouette of a drug dealer <laughs> busting through. I the looked doors. everywhere for hidden drugs the whole time until I was ready to go to sleep. I searched that fucking place like a f- <laughs> so so. Uh, but I was so grateful. I was like, if my family was here, I would have to go down and demand a new room. But all I have to do now is move the table and the chair in front of the door, door and then lay there and hope that somebody kicks the fucking door in <laughs> so I can deal with it. So you have, you have a jump on them. Yeah, you have a little bit of a warning. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I want to win. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're coming in with. You know, we just, Tracy and I just traveled 
plenty of miles in the hotels. Like, Doug, we do what we do. We, we don't go in advance and go, all right, today's itinerary. We're getting to Woodland, California. And we don't, we get close. And it's like, let's look for a hotel oh, here. We, we were trying to stay in Eugene and there was nothing. So then we would just go somewhere else, right? So sometimes those hotels, it's, it's, it ain't, there's not a lot of jobs <laughs> in these towns. <laughs> and, but it's, but they, I tend to look at the doors more now. And your your picture there reminded me, like we just stayed a place up in uh, what was that place in uh, Flagstaff, old hotel, great fucking it's classic. Yeah, my on San Francisco Street. No, no, not that, not that right. one. We stayed at another one. It's really fucking cool. Yeah. But I looked at the door. I'm like, that's like a that's a one by four. <laughs> like behind, like they've beefed up behind the door, like the door itself. And they go, well, no, it's broken, but we put this scab of wood on there. <laughs> we can put the, and I'm like, what the fuck? But it's a whole co- courtyard, so it's all contained, and, we, and the, we were off street parking. But I noticed that I'm looking at doors more now <laughs> at these hotels because, I mean, that's egregious. I mean, three, was, I, three. Kick, that, by the way, strong door. I, that door it kicked in three times, and the screws came out, and the frame didn't break. No, no, door was door was yeah. completely buckled. But uh, I showed the I showed the lady the picture in the morning when I checked out before I was waiting for my Uber. I go, listen, I go, uh, I found it hilarious, but that's only because of who I am. I don't know if you guys know this exists, but it might make some people uneasy. I know you're. She's you're like, behind, oh my god! <laughs> you're buying three inches of plexiglass. Yeah. I know you don't get out much yeah. behind there. Well, but you know what? This is what's happening on this side of the plexiglass. This is where I can chime in because I identify with you. the The picture that you just showed that's on my Twitter that Hack Oddity posted of me falling asleep while him and Joby are still up. A lot of people noticed the stain on the carpet. And I, I don't know if they know about the stain, but it, it's the same thing where there was a, a like a brown stain on the carpet in this five star hotel. <laughs> and as far as the the bus ride back, where you lost two joints, in defense of Virgin Atlantic, yeah, I got there four hours early. Because Virgin Atlantic Lounge on the way out, yeah, at LAX, it's nothing. On the way out, I'll tell you, it's it's uh, not so bad. It's uh, a two-story, they have an outdoor garden if you're into that thing, that you can watch planes take off outdoors. They have an upstairs, they have a pool table and a whole movie viewing. Like, it, it, you've been to Johnny's house. You know how he has, like... Uh, yeah, an indoor theater. It's got that, and it's got gourmet meals and all the cocktails that... See these nails, these maroon nails? Yeah, complimentary manicure. I had to pay 16 pounds for the polish. But you know what? They need the money. They're an impoverished Installation country. Installation free? You have, to, you have to pay for parts? Well, with Brexit, <laughs> there's, they need the sure. money. So I got the chair massage. and But the, it's like with you on a bus that you don't know if they even have a bus coming through. I had to wonder, do I get another gin fizz made with the egg whites yeah. and with the sprigs of stuff? <laughs> or do I get, they have what they called a cutthroat shave. I know you'd give mm. one, Chad, but would you get one? That's Not a straight on the razor shave. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same thing, basically. Olé! I went through shave what, say. <laughs> I'm cutting your throat. I had to leave the Virgin Atlantic Heathrow Lounge to go get Yo Sushi, which was not as good as I remember Yo Sushi, and I love Yo Sushi, but it, it's weird how it comes up. I, Eggs Benedict for free or Yo Sushi because I want it. I it was so conflicted. I did not get enough snacks for the plane. And I was only there for three hours getting massages and manicures. It's like exact. 
We're like the same person, Chad. Did you have anybody to commiserate with, or were you too far away from other people? <laughs> Humans. Yeah, you, know, you were well, pretty isolated. The lady that did my massage and oh, yeah, nails. She got I, close. Sure. Yeah, I, I told her. Sure. I dropped Carl Pilkington's name, oh. and she goes, oh, well, then I'll do this massage as well as I would have anyway. Full charge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I said, hey, can I tip you with a visa? Because I never bothered to get your currency. She goes, no, you can't. I go, all right. And then I went back to the bar. No tip. <laughs> <laughs> no. Did we ever tell I, I, Go ahead. I'm saying it was I, hell. I, we I, both I, lived hell I, on I, Earth. Well, I, I, on the way back uh, on in Phoenix, uh, there was a huge line of people waiting to get on this bus to go from Phoenix to Sierra Vista, which was eventually going on to Texas. You left on the 6 a.m. flight out of Anchorage fucking wrecked. Completely. Wrecked. Completely. Which, I have to say, that's the same way I left Alaska the, the first time. The The... An incredibly attractive young lady sitting next. I was in the middle with my shoulders folded you were in forward. The middle seat. And this lady kept trying to talk to me. Fuck these guys. She's trying to crack jokes, which normally I would have had a lot of fun, except for I have my head tilted back and I'm trying to just drain as much cocaine back down my throat <laughs> as I can so that I can continue this day. And I'm, and, and then I kept trying to pretend I was asleep. So that I could get away with this. <laughs> but it's like so, impossible to shut your eyes. It was a, it it's, was it's a, <laughs> oh, it was a difficult trip. It was much like yours. Uh, um, whenever, but when I was, I was in 11K, <laughs> and there was a guy with a baby in one whatever the middle seat is, and I know someone's going to hear his baby. It's not me, but I put on my Bose headphones and I gave him a dirty look he couldn't see from that distance. So, yeah, exactly. I know. Uh, When I I got on the Greyhound in Phoenix, there was a baby sitting in front of me with its seat fully reclined. It was 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 an infant. It was literally an infant with its seat. To be fair, I found my seat by finding two that were already fully reclined and then just pretended I didn't know better while I just fucking left both of them fully reclined. (laughs) Uh, That was the other thing I tweeted that I did is I just took up two seats and then I just stared at everybody as they walked by until, like, sit by me, motherfucker. Sit by me, motherfucker. Chad has that benefit of looking very scary and intimidating where I have to pull out my cock and balls. (laughs) And smile and wave people in. (laughs) Now, wait a minute. Same same reaction. Now, wait a minute. Also, while while I was waiting in this line, this other uh, uh, similarly largely built fellow uh, comes over to me and starts asking me about my gas monkey garage shirt. Oh, no. And, uh, you know, you watch it, you like that? Did you get that on the show? And I'm like, dude, I've never seen the show. My wife just gets this for me and because they sell them at the big and tall at JC Penney's. And he goes, And my Duck Dynasty t-shirt goes, blew out. He goes, I wore it too much. He goes, he's, like, he's like, man, I get what you're saying. And he goes, I- I'll let my wife buy me clothes for big and tall as long as she doesn't tell me what it really is. And I was like, yeah, and it was I already, I had like a, a, a safe tweet about that. Big and tall is just fucking big and fat. Everybody knows what the <laughs> fuck that means. And, uh, so we started talking and he was like, man, uh, I correction, have- that would be tall and fat. No one says, uh, fuck, you're just calling me tall. This, this, <laughs> just a fat fuck. I think, I think actually what mine said it was big and tall equals fat fuck is what my <laughs> tweet was. But that wasn't what I, what I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an intimate level with this fellow. In the bus station, but he did start commiserating. <laughs> you are now. He did start commiserating with me about how you know, man, there was about forty kids on the fucking last bus, and I was like, yeah, I said I had the same thing. Was, it, was it a like, school bus? And it, it's, I had a whole immigrant family. They all had big fucking name tags on their tape, uh, safety pin to the back of their necks because there was so many of them. They're like, this is the Juarez family. Like it was, they had the whole bus. <laughs> uh, but the, so me and this we start bullshitting and I'm like check it out I go I'm only going to Tucson I go when we get on here if this bus is full let's fucking sit our fat asses in the same fucking seat because I'd rather sit next to your big ass than a fucking you know kid and uh, uh, 
and then I'll get off, and then you got to see to yourself for the rest of your trip. Well, hell yeah. So he, I made a friend at the great. bus station, and then at the last second, we realized that we're getting on different buses. It was like Titanic. I'm fucking the looking at time. it from my phone. Oh, I'm, I'm in front of the Warren's family. I'm not going to get a seat. There's no seats left on this bus. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, the joke aside, again, I did not pay for this twelve thousand wow. dollars seat that the BBC pays for. And hey, you know how many eyeballs you could buy for that? The first time I wrote this in my book, well, like the first time, the it's only 4, other thousand Greyhound bus trips. <laughs> <laughs> Trips. <laughs> Somewhere, some listener is doing the math and going, "It's more than that." It is, it is. <laughs> a low ball. No, you, see, you, ball, you can buy bulk. It was yeah, 30, when I, Twenty-five <laughs> bucks to get me from here to Phoenix. <laughs> when, when I started taking notes for the day Chaley came home, where, where we could podcast again, I started obviously from recent backwards. So I was writing. I wrote down bitch about Virgin Atlantic upper class because it's funny to me. To but I didn't pay for it. Yeah, but there were so many fucking children and babies that I'm like texting if uh, people like. Yeah, I'm complaining about. But who? Why is a fucking you know six year old and I flying I, I, just flying. I have a fucking problem with that. In his own, like, cubicle seat, like, and and babies. Everyone had fucking babies. Uh, One of the guys, he was not in the upper class. He's in the business class. And he saw me as we're going through LAX where you're going to switch your baggage. Oh, he recognized me. And then I recognized him from the guy that had a baby (laughs) right where the toilets meet. You know, that awkward position where you have to look at business class from upper class. Oh, tell me about it. It's unbelievable. Is it awkward if you try to pull the curtain closed yourself? Do you look at the at the staff? Can you come and pull this curtain closed, please? But how fucking dare you? And the guy in one middle seat and I'm an 11K, and I was just fucking hate staring. How dare you? He's got the baby in the the front uh, chest pouch. The baby Bjorn. Oh, baby it's a Bjorn. Sling. It's a sling. Yeah, a sling, and he's bouncing it around, going hey. And then when I I took my seat at the four stool bar, he was fucking there with his baby, and I I purposely put on Bose headphones and death stared him. As only first class can do, or or greyhound rider. <laughs> no, you can. I can death stare in my stupid suit. Fuck you. You, he'd just go. I need this man thrown off the plane because you look well, like I look like I don't belong uh, in a different way. Uh, anyway, the point is, I made a point of getting up from after eight hours to get my fucking. You know they have an after hours menu. After they serve you your gourmet meal, they still have <laughs> oh, the luxury <laughs> continues, things. sir. Yeah. Here's your here's your next meal. I, here's my burger with Swiss and it was it was kind of cold. <laughs> anyway, mm. I just like now you brought that fucking baby down here and a couple people came down to the bar in their Virgin Atlantic pajamas where they give you free pajamas, you know. When you go upper class, they give you free pajamas and shit and socks. And and people actually change into them. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to be smart fucky and at the same time. I, yeah, they change into them. So, I, and they're going, that's adorable, baby. No, it's not. It's a... As babies go, it's ugly, and all of them are fucking ugly, (laughs) and this is a stupid, fat-headed fucking baby. It looks like Carl Pilkington's head on a baby. It's a giant fucking mud-headed baby, and go, don't promote that. He goes, I hope it didn't keep too many people awake. (laughs) 
if it kept one people away, if it kept one that's people, twelve fucking thousand dollars they spent on this fucking stupid baby. Where does a baby have to be? I'm not gonna fuck. This should, a, yeah, no, I totally I mean, agree. They should have a baby bag or something that they can put it in, like a barf bag. <laughs> Like, oh, this one's crying. Like yeah, like a, a sound I muffling. Heard him fucking yeah. talking. Oh, we're just going on holiday. Let's start a holiday. Oh, I hope it didn't keep too many people. Oh, well, I could see it from where I sat, dude. I'm Eleven f- rows away. You have to eleven rows away. And the, they were in the first row. Doug was in eleven. Oh, I'm so sorry for your, all your inconvenience. <laughs> I was in horrible. eleven because eleven. I'm sorry, Chad. Let me explain. Whenever- eleven is where they break. The exit. So one is actually the back of first class. Sure. Eleven is right at the bar where I plan to be. Sure. Oh, it's by the bar. I'm going to be right beside the bar so I can wake up, eat my fucking dinner alone because no one drinks anymore. Beautiful. I'm going to eat that, and then I'm going to be the first cocksucker off this plane. And that guy brought his stupid, fat, ugly, stupid baby with his stupid bald spot and his ugly fucking wife down to my bar. And then he's bouncing around the baby oh. in his fucking uh, tit suit. Ooh, I hope it doesn't that's cry so down here. Well, that's by my seat. Yeah. You, and I did not say anything because I was a diplomat. Yeah, I, I I get what you're saying. I'm like, I hope it didn't bother people. <laughs> yeah, it bothered. If it bothered only three rows at at, at uh, you know, uh, f- however many seats. Yeah, that's twelve thousand thirty six thousand twelve thirty six thousand forty eight thousand. I'm going to it's three forty eight three at twelve. 000. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! you know, I could smash that. I could get the, I could get the Heathrow right now for uh, fourteen hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on Delta, yet. well, it's not coming up. But it ain't. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. I was just trying to say, Virgin Atlantic Lounge at Heathrow is one of the most brilliant places you can be. But the downside is, you go. I only have three hours here. Do I get the cutthroat shave? Do I get the 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 pedicure manicure? I can only imagine how you must feel. Whenever I was uh, <laughs> uh, headed uh, uh, up to Alaska, they announced uh, if you want to check your bag, you could do it for free. So I ran up there to do it for free, so I didn't have to lug that fucking the carry on thing around. Yeah, I so you ca- just check I had it a carry at the on gate. bag, but yeah. they were like, "You can check it. We're, we're trying to check bags. If you want to check it for free, it'll be at your destination." I'm like, fuck yeah, I don't want to carry this heavy motherfucker around. And uh, when I went up there to do it, the lady noticed my uh, uh, physique <laughs> and uh, upgraded me to a uh, uh, emergency exit row. <laughs> Nice. Which was a uh, ton that or the of, bulkhead is usually more like of extra room. Yeah, yeah. I was so fucking happy with that. That was uh... Delta just announced that they are going to uh, make a lot of the the rows of seats you can't recline. Two inches less. And and Joby was bragging like fuck you, you'll hate this, but yeah, that for me that's good. Well, then just recline. Everyone recline your fucking seats. I don't recline my seat, uh, even when I can, because I just, I, I don't care. But then have all the seats reclined already. Well, exactly. Well, exactly. That's, I, I just don't, I'm, I don't I'm with you. If everybody could get on board, then it makes it the same way. But if the airline could make them all fucking reclined anyway. Because uh, remember when we went up. to Vegas, that dude kept reclining and oh, I kept shoving his fucking man, seat fucking, forward with my fist a, because uh, I didn't think that was right. That was a Greyhound issue on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm a greyhound. Uh, I'm a greyhound rider in a plain world. I love that greyhound and Amtrak. There's still there's still businesses that could be like like you had. Uh, yeah, we don't know where that bus is or that train. We're gonna be 24 hours late. Sorry, it, it's like yeah, we're not sweating the details here at Amtrak because uh, Doug and I were on it on a train in Canada that got like 18 hours late. And it, the, the only remember what they said? You can stand in this line. Stand in line. We've been standing in line, standing on a train for eighteen hours. We would go to sleep, get up, eat, come back, go to sleep, and the train never moved. That's how fucking long. 
And it's, there was no explanation as to why. I, I realized, uh, well, and I had already realized it before, but thanks to Stanhope, I am a Greyhound level influencer. I'm a Greyhound <laughs> rider and I love my Because the radio. other guy, the other guy who couldn't get, <laughs> who was supposed to go is on the phone trying to deal with yeah. it. I'm tweeting. Twi- hey, yeah. what the fuck you, Greyhound? You're fucking me over. And then everybody retweets it and favorites it. And then Greyhound yeah. help has to be answering me. DM me and I'll help you. And uh, like you do with Delta. Yeah. But but I'm, I have Greyhound level status. So uh, <laughs> the other guy gets told, you're fucked. Sorry, find a room the, for the guy tonight. on the phone. The, the guy, guy on the phone. phone. The other guy, the only other dude going, and he's like, "You're fucked. You get a room because uh, tomorrow you got to go tomorrow." And meanwhile, I'm on the the Twitter, and they're like, "Yeah, you're Where a tons more eyeballs are looking at that. You're going, you're going on the very next bus. No worries. Also, we're gonna give you a twenty five dollar credit so that you, which is what I used to get home from Phoenix after I got back from sure. Alaska, uh, and." Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't get your don't get your return in advance. Yeah, <laughs> chances are you're going to be displeased somewhere along the lines, See, that's a, and you tweet it. That's a and you'll whole, get that's a that's good scam. A whole other fucking story, dude. When I got back to Phoenix, where I had a court for my daughter on yeah. Monday, the day you I left earlier. Flew, I left flew yeah. out on Sunday and had court with her on Monday morning. And you had to be back for that. That's why you left. Well, I mean, I didn't have to. She's just going to jail. Well, but, I mean, you, you want to. I mean, in my eyes. I mean, was she still going to jail whether I'm there or not? In my eyes, at, at, at 3 in the morning and you're still not back at the Airbnb, I'm like, Chad's got to get on this plane. I mean, that was. I had to. Yeah. Had to. Uh, so we get there and she, uh, we're like there for two and a half hours. And all of a sudden, this other lawyer comes over and approaches us. And he's like, oh, hey, your lawyer played in a lesbian softball game. And uh, got a line drive to her face, and so she's not here. Uh, she uh, wants to be here for your sensing, so you got to reschedule it for next week. You motherfuckers, this wait, is expensive. Wait, hold on a second. But I can't be pissed off about it because she gets a week more of freedom, oh, so I have true. to be like, hey, good for you. And I got to fucking. Why did they it. have to say lesbian softball game? Well, I said, isn't that. it implied? <laughs> I said that because I didn't know if it was implied, and I'm kind of drunk. I probably shouldn't have. Me so not. that worked out. Well, um, I, I ended. Uh, I, I I found her a place to go because she was supposed to go to jail. She went, and then I took the Greyhound back, and then I rode my motorcycle back the other day, uh, Sunday. I rode my motorcycle to Phoenix. And uh, got a room at the uh, Best Western Airport in, which is a way more accurate name. <laughs> although they should call it the Best Western Freeway and Airport in. <laughs> they do give you earplugs. Freeway close. They do give you uh, immediately. <laughs> it's on the freeway. If, if it were any more on the freeway, there'd be cars driving on the roof. <laughs> uh, they give. They do give you earplugs though, and uh, uh, I've. Uh, I just realized that we're still podcasting. I thought we were just talking, and I feel, now I feel all self-conscious. I was going to say that. Uh, now I feel all self-conscious. No, you went up there, you went up there in, to go in, in, in uh, London. I had a, a film Friday and Monday, so Saturday I hung out with Hack and mm. Joby. They did the nice thing, like you guys do. Fuck off <laughs> early in the morning, and Sunday I realized, oh. Now I have five hours to listen to Joe Rogan, Alex Jones podcast. It's a four hour and 48 minute podcast. And I go, well, I have nothing to do. I won't put on British television because there's no television to watch this. I, but I don't want to hear the fucking repeated voices in my head or a song that's stuck in my head. And I wrote a note to myself. Alex Jones on Joe Rogan. So I put that on on my computer, woke up way too early, finally put it on after I checked my shit, and and I, I got maybe an hour and a half in, and then I started drifting in a dreamscape, and then back out, and it's still interesting. Now Eddie Bravo's on. Like, I want to listen to this. Fucking Morgan Murphy was here, and... It was the day that Joe Rogan had done Alex Jones's podcast. In well, you did my podcast, I'll do, do yours. And she was bitching about it. it's inappropriate on the day that a Parkland's father killed himself. I, I don't need these fucking problems. 
I love Morgan Murphy. I love every time she comes here. Sure. And then eventually she will annoy me with something I don't care about. No, I think it's wrong. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't care. But I wanted to listen to the original. Which is a five-hour thing. Even Gump said, yeah, I, 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 "I got through about uh, two two hours of it, and it's interesting." But so I put that on, and I kept falling asleep. And it's on YouTube. So then it goes into another Alex Jones, Joe Rogan, and I, I, I had this fever dream sleep of that, and I don't remember why this came up. <laughs> you say it was for me, not knowing what I was talking about. Good job. But uh, yeah, I got to listen to it, and uh, I oh, that's why that's why it came up. I feel like this is one of those podcasts because <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we tried to break it twenty minutes. We and, did break, and then we, I, and then we did like, our thank yous, and then uh, the uh, Derek thing, and now it's been an hour and a half. Well, to be fair. When was the last time that we got to podcast? I, I told, know. Yes. I told you guys whenever I walked in here, I was all excited because I'm like, I feel like I get to attend therapy We've for the been first excited time in since months. the fucking week I, he left. I texted Stanhope at one point. I was like, I I need to podcast. <laughs> I don't understand this. It was a week after Chaley left. It was the beginning of March where me and you and Gump were saying, yeah, we want a podcast. I was almost tempted to try to figure out how your fucking gear works if you had it, it wasn't left here. Gear. I took it to Alaska. <laughs> Which if I tack on that horrible fucking shouting podcast that we did when you arrived in Alaska, <laughs> this thing will be Rogan size. <laughs> it As will it be. should be. It's an epic comeback podcast. And uh Brett Erickson wants to I, I don't know what we're gonna do with that other one, but Brett Erickson and Andy. The one we did, the sound check podcast. I, I want to put that out because it is, I want to, I can't You're wait right. to edit it. Oh, I would, I, I was just laughing. At one I'm, point, Andy just started steamrolling things <laughs> like, like, uh, like putting rubber bands on pig's balls and my grandfather and whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Andy, you can't just go and then to, you have to slow it down, pay it out a little bit. We were all laughing so hard that we had to like figure out who was going to stop him because we, we were all turns like turns raining him in. Like, like, but he loved being reined oh in so that he could tell three coherent stories at one time. I think is what it was. I don't know what happened. I hate to stop you, but Derek was leaving, but he can't see. So where is he going? He's the only one that left. You're the, you're his ride. <laughs> Stocks and Raider. Oh, is he? Oh, he's staying. All right, let's not. We'll get into that. God knows wow. what the fuck he's doing. But he he's not driving. That's the good thing. So All we've right. got we've got Chuggleheads. You're doing the 18th and the 22nd. Which are, <laughs> by the time this any goes out, dates that are on the website. Call the venue. If we said it's sold out, it might be wrong. Except for Vegas is sold out. Unless you live there, and then there's probably people that won't show up. So if you're that dedicated that you're going to be like Fight Club and stand on the porch yeah. for two days, it stand. It, it, I, I I need to say this because this is how it's happened in the past when you've done shows in Vegas. If you have tickets and you can't go, don't call me. Don't email Doug. Just put it on Twitter, and uh, people will they'll they'll be able to figure it out. And it's it? always worked out in the past. Uh, uh, I buried this so I wouldn't fixate on it, but you made me think of it. Some cunt oh. emailed me after I said, "Hey, listen." Don't, it's going to be the same material. It's a special. I'm shooting the same material. And when I said that on a podcast before they were evergreen in February, he said, listen, uh, I'm coming. I'm driving four hours. Uh, I don't care how much you shit on me. It's important to see you. No, it's. I'm not going to give up my other tickets. He like, it's like in my face. No, Fuck I'm not. You. I bought tickets to both your shows uh, when there was only two. Uh, I'm not going to give up one. And you can shit on your fans all you want, but it's 
so important to me. No, it's not. You're going to not fucking get this. You're not going to laugh at the same jokes twice in a night unless you're completely... (laughs) Don't just don't shit on developmentally disabled. Just don't shit on that guy in in the special. Other people that's what want to see the fucking for. show. He goes, unless you cancel my tickets, and I go, oh, you know what? I I, I, can, I can do that. And then I stop myself. And if you're listening, which you are, <laughs> fuck you. No, I'm sorry. Then just fucking give up those tickets. You're just gonna see the same shit, and you're stealing from fucking other people that want to see that fucking show. You're a fucking cocksucker, but I will not cancel your tickets. But I should. But instead, I buried you in the random folder. You're a fucking random. You're a fucking nothing. Just fucking be magnanimous and give those tickets up. It's such a douchebag move. Is it- after spending some time with Andrus, we have uh, decided that him and I might uh, conjoin somewhere in Vegas during this time on our own fucking venture. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to say this? No, no. This is there's no there. more buyer's this remorse on this podcast. I'll tell you what. We had so much fun in uh, Anchorage. Uh, I'd be a party to that. Andrus, Andrus was this is this is how ridiculous Andrus was. He was having so much fun. And clearly, I don't even know a tenth of what he was doing. In front of the bouncers at Coots, <laughs> we're sitting there on Saturday night. I don't even know if you saw this. We're sitting at the table at that main bar where we never went we never more moved. than three tables I in. Bouncers I know at, what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> bouncers at Coots are like the stormtroopers. No shit. At a, uh, Polite. Uh, yeah. And they don't know who the fuck I am. I don't. I'm not. I'm not there anymore, right? Yeah, we're, we're, so, we're persona. So non we're persona grata, believe me. <laughs> but they don't. I don't know what they know, right? Andrus comes fucking out of nowhere and just comes up and he does this whole hacky thing where he goes, "Who says I have a drinking problem?" And he throws a glass, not his, a drink, and throws it to the side of his head, and ice and everything goes down, and like. The guy could have like touched his head with his nose. He was that close. It was the bouncer, the head bouncer. And I'm like, I don't know what I can do here. I don't know what I can do. And he just looked around. Did you, were you there? Absolutely. I was Jesus. right there. He, he looked at Anderson, told him to pick that shit up is exactly what he did. Pick that ice up in all the sawdust. That's a fucking good. <laughs> That's and and a great he dropped thing. down and picked that shit up. <laughs> And he cleaned up a swath in the, in the sawdust. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it gets changed. We, <laughs> At this point, I am so happy to just hear the stories rather than, you don't remember that? You were there. Uh, and then, man. You should have been there. Fuck no, you. No, fuck that. Fuck no, he's, I've been there I for a agree. million years. If, if Doug do could have been there, he would have. And there, and that that's the excuse I gave because it was true. I do he's, agree. Right? He's I getting have, ready to do something. My last book, he's I have a chapter mode, that I yeah. said, okay, this could be a whole book. Yeah. But it should be theirs. But Duran doesn't fucking. Honestly, you know what? Oh you showing God. up last Next minute. Next year? No, but if he would have showed up last minute. Kyle Kinane was the headliner. The Unbookables was a headliner show. Uh, Michelle, Jessica Singleton, they were all headliners. You, that that wasn't the focus. Yeah. You could. They were asking me to book you way in advance, but you had so much going on with this taping that it was going to be. It was going to be when it was. It, everything went fine. Next it, year, it let's fine. all go die at Choku Charlie's <laughs> next year together. <laughs> so. We'll take a greyhound. Go out. Yeah, I'm telling we'll take you. A let's grey all go. That was what uh, Andy Andy Anderson and I were texting afterwards because I found out on this trip, uh, uh, my dad. Well, I knew I've always known my dad has five acres of land in Alaska that's on a lake, and uh, it's just called Remote Alaska. There's not a uh, an actual place of it. <laughs> that's a term for something that doesn't have a name. Yeah, um, but. Uh, We've. I was joking with Andy, but while we're there, like, fuck it, let's just let's just ditch, you know, let's ditch our, our responsibilities that we have. We did all right so far. Fuck it, let's just go back to Dad, the- I have when I worked on the Man Show, I just buy stupid shit on eBay, so I have a lot, which just a lot in Chloride, Arizona. 
oh shit, that's right. <sighs> that I'm just like every year when I do taxes, I have to pay like thirteen dollars of yearly property taxes. Yeah. That could be our the uh, winter home. <laughs> the <laughs> chloride to to remote. <laughs> Oh, could, listen! Could, it started it off could as be a, like the uphills. It started <laughs> off as a it started off as a joke, and then I started talking about it on my Twitch channel with uh, Fury, who is a uh, agriculture uh, specialist. So he would be able to help us grow uh, crops, landscaping uh, on our on our on our property, and then Mike, who lives off grid right now between here and where I live, out in the mountains of Bisbee. Uh, off like solar, and he he understood, and they're both like, "Fuck yeah, let's go!" I'm like, oh shit, I didn't want this to be a real thing. And there's you know, not uh, Doug. He we were having a, a we were at a burger place, and and we were waiting, and it's like this uncomfortable thing where we have to talk to each other. And Chad Chad <laughs> pulls up this picture, like this. He pulls up this uh, uh geo map thing, and you're fucking that 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 land. There's fucking nothing. He bought his dad bought it in the seventies. There's fucking nothing forever, and it, but there's a lake. And you, I mean, you got good you can, land. You can get in there off a float plane, or you can go it, during machine. the winter. You can snow machine in across the Susitna River. But that's well, only that's what I would in. do. Obviously, well, like, clearly, uh, based well, on well, my history, Virgin well, Atlantic well, does have one well, stop there. <laughs> well, now that we have a now that we have a a, a winter fucking uh, the compound. I uh yeah, <laughs> let's just fly in. Fuck. <laughs> oh, that would be fun to go out to go out cuz Alex just Alex was out in uh in Alaska and he uh hosted one of the uh Dirty Bird shows and he actually took out they fucking went out and did shit. He told me before he left. They, they, he goes, they, I'm only coming up here one time. He goes, I'm well, going to spend money. You did some money fucking shit with fucking a- bears you haven't talked about. So let's drag this out more. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> well, what happened was <laughs> We were at Coots. Uh, they had a scavenger hunt. And I go, if we fucking just, if we just enter into this scavenger hunt, none of these comics are going to do shit and we'll win. And Chad, he'll get all the swag from the fucking, cause, cause it's weed, like the sponsors, it's weed, Coots and all this stuff. So what are we going to do? So we start, I go, I look at the list of things to do. It's a bunch of joke things, but then I'm going, Oh, we, these are obtainable. Are we can Here's do this. The easy one. No one fuck. We had like 180 points. <laughs> there was no one had any points because it was all shit. I wanted to go show Chad and the and the brunches anyway. We we so I got a car for one day, hundred bucks. We go up to Flat Top, and then we make plans for the next day. We're gonna go do the uh, the animal sanctuary, wildlife sanctuary out in the out in the Girdwood, right? But. Wednesday night gets in the way. Whoa, the Brechels. Wednesday night into Thursday morning. <laughs> the Brechels. Days get in the way. <laughs> at the end of the night, they fucking hop in a car with our friends and go to their house. And they're texting us going, where are you guys? It's like, we're, we're leaving, going back to the fucking the Airbnb. As we planned, we're leaving in the morning. And it's like, what the fuck? And, and then they text, oh, Andrus is here. <laughs> So it's off the fucking rails, right? They're hot tubbing. They're t- keep. T- Where are you guys? No, we're having breakfast. Meanwhile, the only reason why Shaley rented a van is because all of us were going to go. We could have rented a car. We planned it. <laughs> we planned it. So we go. Shaley planned it. No, everyone. Well, we were all there. We're all staying in yeah. one Airbnb. Shaley planned it. Everyone said, okay. We were we were tight tight. I don't uh, know. No, 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 no. This no. was every, we everyone. We all wanted to do it. Here's the thing: is the the they all went as a group. The the comedians all went on a sanctioned free tour bus ride over to this wildlife sanctuary the day before. Whereas we all woke up and go, yeah, I don't think that's for us. But then Shaley goes, do you want to rent a car? For the next day, and we'll go do it on our own. And we were like, "Fuck yeah, we're for that." Everyone yeah. was fuck yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. So then, in the morning, <laughs> it's eleven in the morning. Amy Andrews was the most fuck yeah. <laughs> eleven in the morning, I I wake up and I'm like, I don't know, man. 
I mean, I don't know because we went to we went to late night dinner and we had like we, we hung out. We, I think Rice, we went to bed at eight. Listen, I, listen I've been here when uh, we went to bed at eight. In the how morning. many times? Every single time, Chad Shank says, "Yeah, tomorrow we're definitely gonna do that." I'm so fucking yeah, and then at eleven in the morning. At eleven, I was, I was trapped in an Airbnb. <laughs> at eleven in the morning, I'm just sleeping on a four foot couch. At eleven in the morning, I wake up and I go, Tracy, I don't know. And she's like, Well, we'll see what happens. At twelve oh three, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? And I get up and. Chad, Chad goes. Chad, there's a, we're like in a, a basement, sub basement thing, and there's these, these little windows. But the window, the windows are under a deck. <laughs> and Chad goes. I think someone's knocking on the window. Was it was fucking Andy <laughs> at twelve oh three, and I said we're leaving at twelve. At twelve oh three, he's on his hands and knees, crawling, knocking on a window, and then ran, ran away. The Wait. people are for the for the listener. <laughs> April in. Alaska is mud, <laughs> unseasonably no, warm. Usually there was no, it is. so it's oh, deeper it's mud. mud. No, no, it was no. all fucking dry. It was, everything dry. was dry, and there so, was a little bit of ice and snow. And he's yeah. on his hands and knees, knocks on the window, and then leaves. <laughs> Doesn't stand by the window. Back door. Ran to the back door, and I let him in. And that's when the bloody nose <laughs> mouth thing happened. And we all went to the thing, and the Bretchels had just gone to bed at like ten or eleven in the morning, so there was no way. And then we went out, and we saw bear. We saw. Uh, uh, brown bears. We saw black bears. Oh man! Everything it, else pales in comparison. But it was it was fantastic. And Andy wh- is a morning guy. Definitely, definitely. Oh, I busted his ball so bad. One morning, I tried to lay down about eight o'clock. Finally, I laid down, <laughs> and Andy was. I was sleeping on a couch in the living room, and Andy was on a cot across from me. So I lay down about eight o'clock in the morning, and then of course I lay there and just fake sleep, which is mostly what we did there. Andy, Andy, going, he was like, "We're all just faking sleep anyway," <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, you're right." So I fake sleep, and then as soon as I started to actually enjoy my fake sleep and start to go to sleep, Andy wakes up, but he doesn't just wake up. He wakes up and turns on the TV, yeah, <laughs> to cranks it up, finds, and then he leaves. And goes in the bathroom with the TV on. <laughs> then he gets in the shower, and this is this is a very compact place. He gets in the shower and sings at the top <laughs> of his fucking lungs. I'm like, Are you fucking shitting me? And you're gonna what's the song? Uh, oh, I couldn't tell you because I was seething. Counting in, crows. I was seething in <laughs> anger the whole time. I couldn't, re- and and so I. Um, Lay down, and that's uh, your album title. <laughs> he's singing singing anger. In anger. So he get done. He comes out, and uh, the night I f- I took a shower in the middle of the night just because, like I said, it was tight circumstances, and so uh, you got to uh, jerk off somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, 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 gentlemen, no, be a no, gentleman. No, 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 no. But uh, the uh, it was warm when I got out, and so I put on you know shorts and a tank top to go to sleep in. Andy was warm when he got out of his shower, too. So he opened the front door. <laughs> so I'm sleeping on the couch. In Alaska. Going, I'm sleeping on the couch. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Man? I look up and go, Andy, you son of a bitch. You fucking turned on the TV. And then you left. And then you That's sat not loud in enough. the shower. And then you got out. And then you opened the fucking door, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and uh, I knew right then and there that Andy and Anderson and I should become roommates and live together. <laughs> that's that's a fucking reality that show. Would, I would be. I would let you film every, every e- fucking second of it for the two weeks that it lasted. <laughs> <laughs> every time we bring Andy on the road, it's uh, like that. But I love it the same way you do. But he fucks up everything. His yeah. act. The day, the night. Here's the thing. Then he he's, disappears. He's got a different thing going because of his. Uh, he's not hardly drinking when he does his act. That is, that is true. And he's very concise on his comedy and, and oh. good. He, and uh, also. Well, that's because he was in Alaska no, where he's doing blow. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. It was before. Yeah, he was. Also, um, me being with Andy is a, he never has a, there was supposed to be somebody that's supposed to be his handler and then Andy ended John up Mink. Being, and then John Andy Mink. ended up being his oh, handler. Yeah, I heard about this. But as far as having an Andy handler, um, 
Andy respects me in, in put it in, like he told me already. He was like, "You're, you're yours is the only bag that I won't go through." <laughs> like, like, and he he's a, I don't know if it's there's fear, that other bindle. If, if it's fear, <laughs> if it's fear or respect, I don't know what it is, but I know it's true, and uh, it makes me the closest thing to a, a, a decent handler. That Andy's ever had. I have to tell you, I, I've been on the road plenty of times with Andy, but I have to tell you, I woke up one day in Anchors and I said, has someone been through my shit? Seriously. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I I fucked with Andy about going through my shit, and he was yeah. like, "Yours is the only shit I would never well, go through." Now you through. say that, I and know, I, I, I know, do, my my. Uh, I do believe it because I believe if if he knows if I even suspected. <laughs> also, he knows that if I have anything at all, I he'd be the first person I would share, share it with because he I love to fucking party and hang out with Andy. But he also knows that if I even suspected that he fucking disrespected my stuff, I'd probably murder him wherever the fuck he sat, which is a whole different thing. That in respect. <laughs> well, it's thanks need. for that. So you, need. you ever need me to hold anything for you? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand it to you instead of put it in the nightstand drawer. Uh, my, my bag is off limits, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than the hotel safe. <laughs> uh, I uh, I have oh, to fall shit. down. I just get home. I have to do a show I don't remember from last oh, year. Oh, that's tomorrow. But you guys can keep doing the podcast. Oh, we're without drink. I gotta we're drink. I got to work the door at that show tomorrow. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't yeah, yeah. Tracy's, know what's going Tracy's on. working the list. Right on. Yeah. Tracy, me, and you are partners then tomorrow. Right I'll be over yeah. I'll be over early. Uh, I'll, I'll come over here No, come here. Tomorrow. Just come over yeah. here. Yeah. That's it. I'll come yeah. over here early. 5 o'clock. We'll be in here. 5 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Gump, Gump, you're with me. Yeah. I know you don't know how to make a bed, so I have to go over with you to uh, fucking make some beds tomorrow at the comedy condo. And you'll learn how to make a bed, and you'll never learn. <sighs> Who's going to show you how to make There's a bed? so many Gump. experienced Gumps that are just pining with their <laughs> resumes. Oh <my> God. <laughs> I can their make teeth. a bed! I can make a bed! <laughs> in the hot every time he mentions gump. Uh, <laughs> gump grows on me all gump the time. Gump pisses away his fucking opportunity. <laughs> yeah, but I, I love him more and more. Well, I think that's endearing that. to Doug. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that's uh, what, what do you think? Doug's going to be endeared to a go-getter? <laughs> <laughs> Look at those hospital corners. How, much, Man, did, how much did everyone hate fucking Derek when he was like a fuck up? Well, you know what? No, he became a fuck up. He was charming at first. No, he wasn't. Uh, no, I thought that's so. Like, like the desert. No, parties. we made him charming. But well, he was, I mean, uh, him and Kenny would fucking gimp around this fucking place. Like, you're not getting anything done. Like, I, I told Gump, uh, no, not Gump, uh, Derek. <laughs> In the early days, I'm going to charge you by the job or pay you by the job. Like most people versus do. Versus the sure. hour because you fucking drag your leg. And I know you can do better than this. He's still a fucking gump. Really doesn't know how to do a fucking thing. I don't think he knows how to make a bed. And tomorrow we have to make the beds in the comedy condo. Can so I just film it? I just want to film it. I, I want to I write a book where... Uh, where I show the transition from Stanhope in his early days of doing uh, scam phone calls yeah. to where he has become the mark. <laughs> <laughs> just it's, yeah, it's the evolution of man, getting, where it goes yeah, up and he's standing, yeah, standing yeah, up straight and then he goes back getting, down. Just getting worked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for you to end this, Doug. The emperor has uh, no clothes. I, I was going to let you guys end it because oh, you I still. No, we're going to we're going to talk more about the stuff we can talk about. Uh, <laughs> Alaska. I would love to talk more. off air. Oh, next next week, my new best friend Catherine. Uh, I'll, I'll wait. No, and uh, you tweeted Good tease. it. Good tease. Yeah, yeah. We, we talked to her off air last night. She's totally in. Right on. She's in. Uh, yeah. Next week we'll. And unfortunately, Valentina, who they're they're perfect together. Yeah, she can't be here, but I bet she'll find a way to be here. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're the matchmaker. 
Yeah, they, they, yeah, they. My new best friend. I think I talked about her on the last podcast. Only briefly. briefly. No. Only well, I only knew no, briefly. It was, it was after. after 15 well, no, minutes. No, no, you called her on the phone no, afterwards. No, Let's you, be new best friends. That's how much you that's said. That's all he said, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. she's she'll yeah. probably so, get Monday. so much shit for- Monday. I'll she's a feminist and she does, like, she goes and talks to colleges about being a feminist and I, 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 I'm fucked up. But they both don't drink, her and Valentina. They don't drink. And I go, they're going out for coffee tomorrow. That's drinking. And I, <laughs> no, I go, Drugs. oh, hey, tell her. Like, because they're... My act. Oh, you're having hey. Valentina warn her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is the first date thing. This is the first... Do you take your first date there to scare them off? Or to, to steal She's them, probably, steal them. Uh, I don't know if she, she like. Can they take it? Can they take? Yeah, yeah, where's yeah, what's happening yeah. here? I never but, thought this podcast would turn into a soap opera. But she has a fucking. <laughs> it has a novella. She <laughs> has a thing. I'm all, where, I'm all for it. She has a thing where she's a, a feminist, and I, we agree to be best friends in 15 minutes at the Tucson airport. Uh, and then it was funny. Then, then she but, probably Googled you. Ooh, no, she didn't. <laughs> but when she gets on our podcast, her people will. Yeah. Like, I have a fucking 30-year history, 29-year history of things that, oh, he said this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some would say you have a history of being right, Stan <laughs> And, uh, no, but a lot of it is. Hey, I told my girlfriend I wanted to fuck her between the tits. Uh, she said, "How are you going to make that feel good for me?" I said, "Right before I come, I'll stop punching you in the face." <laughs> that is a joke that I used as a. Uh, well, it was funny in that year. The you I did put it. a. By the way, I cut that up. I put a laugh track in there, and then I think it's you funny in. now. So, but. You're welcome. It's the only joke Boy, being. On stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were we were uh, doing sound check at an improv somewhere. And I go, Tracy, go over and tell a joke. Nice. <laughs> I used to use a like nice. a, sh a shock value, short attention span joke. Well, but there's other things well, I've said. That now you have Nazis. Good job, Stan. <laughs> Hope you're happy with yourself. Well done. <laughs> hey, <laughs> cash at the door. Close hey! this. Close this motherfucker. <laughs> Good I, to be home. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for meeting me in Tucson, me and Tracy, and uh, uh, yeah, it's great to be back. It's the end of the podcast as we know it. No, nope. it's the. <laughs> That was a close, right? I guess. Gurk, right. Gurgle. Okay, I'm stopping hey. it. Oh, I guess I'm not stopping let's, uh, it. Let's, uh, let's give a round of applause for our... Uh, our Do we need bar tweezers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad my drink is over here. <laughs> <laughs> what are no, you doing? We, we we ended this. I'm, I'm ready uh, to hit stop. Uh, stop. Uh, hit stop. No. Because I was going hey, to give if shit to uh, Raider at the end and end stop. This podcast, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put the shouting podcast. Fucking Derek Derek said, hey, can I bring stocks and Raider? I go, we, we made this rule of no. There's no fucking audience for the podcast based on Derek, stocks, and Raider. Who don't laugh and they're bored. We walked my wife. My walk. My wife walked like a th oh, third shit. of the way. Yeah, through. no one's here. Yeah, Derek walked. Like they, they don't care about the fucking podcast. They just sit there. They're fucking bored the whole fucking time. Didn't we start this podcast yeah, exactly? How we come full fucking, circle. Yeah, we stopped. But Derek wanted to say thank you for helping me with um, my fucking cataract thing. I, I want to say thank you for allowing me to see Derek do that Stevie Wonder <laughs> move. was That's fucking awesome. hilarious. <laughs> I'll never Joby, forget it. Joby 
on the last fucking call for, hey, help us get the last $365 for Derek. So I did another thing for Derek. You tweeted and, something? Or- yeah. And Joby said, yeah, I pitched in 100 bucks or something under the name Stevie Wonder. <laughs> And that was before tonight, where everyone was doing Stevie Wonder. So, yeah. Good night. Good night.